Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Filmcast, a podcast about movies. I'm David Chen, and a new Inside Out, Bad Boys, and Twister? What is this? 2015 and or 2020 and or 1998? Wow. Joining me today is Devendra Hardwar. It's the summer of the X-Men, or people who would be great in X-Men. And Jeff Kanata. I'm still furiosa about last year because of all the crazy twisters that happened. And I've been turning myself inside out thinking I'm a despicable me. But this year, I'm hoping to turn things around uh, and not end up in the Deadpool. Wow. <laughs> Bravo. Bad boys. Bad boys. Bra- Bravo. I'm going to ride or die. I'm going to ride or die ride with or this die. list. I tell mm-hmm. you that right now. Mm-hmm. The one thing mm-hmm. I know about this group, though, it's not a quiet place. Wow. <laughs> Jeff will be the fall guy when this episode turns Ooh. out to be pretty Ooh. bad. Thank you. Deadpool versus Wolverine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, <laughs> one of the apes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, those are, of course, all vague and oblique references to the fact that today on the podcast, it's time for our annual summer movie wager game. I'll be explaining the rules shortly. But first, let me introduce our guest. He is. Uh, a senior reporter from io9 and gizmodo jermaine lucier welcome back to the podcast thank you for having me last year my picks were an oppenheimer bomb this year i hope to be the maverick top gun once again (laughs) uh she is a writer podcaster and pop culture analyst who currently works as the lead evening news editor at slash film and co-hosts the coming of age film podcast this ends at prom bj colangelo welcome back to the podcast Oh, thank you for having me. I'm very excited for this to be my first time, and I'm hoping that I can remind everyone that sometimes you have to turn your instincts inside out and remember that animation makes a lot of fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> we are Pixar, apparently, these days. We're so pleased to welcome BJ. This is her first time here on the Summer Movie Wager, and she is ready to do battle with us. It's going to be a great time. All right, joining us also, he is the founder of SlashFilm.com, the co-creator of The Ordinary Adventure. YouTube channel, Peter Serretta. Welcome back to the podcast. And the reigning two-time champ. Yes. Yes. Welcome back to the podcast. I've won the summer movie wager the last two years, so how about we just call it a day, I make you all watch a bad movie, and then that's it. (laughs) That's true. That's true. I I think, like, Peter, you've proven you have the most time of all of us to just sit and think about the summer movie wager. I think that's it. Wow. First (laughs) jab. That was was low. (laughs) We're coming. We're coming. I mean, I'm just... Saying if, happy things. If you win this year, it's officially a dynasty. And uh, yes. yeah. we can't let that happen. Wow. I, I will say this year is the first year that I'm kind of like for a full year been out of covering movies. You know, I wasn't at Slash Film in the last year. And I also don't have my right hand man, Ryan Scott, who I used to always like go to right. and like have conversations about box office. So this year, I'm more in the dark than ever. So there, there is a chance that you guys can win this year. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Same. laughs> so basically, yeah. since, since you didn't have an unfair advantage yeah, on your rigor is yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, See, and the funny <laughs> thing is, I get to edit Ryan's box office pieces yeah. now. Oh. So. Oh. The shoe is oh. on the well, other well. foot. By the way, Ryan, Ryan called me this last week. I had, I had an opportunity to, to strategize, but I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, so welcome to the 2024 Summer Movie Wager. Uh, Before we begin today's wager, just want to mention a few administrative things right off the top. Uh, People may have noticed that uh, this last week, a hit movie came out starring Zendaya, uh, Challengers. Uh, We would typically review that during this week's episode of the podcast. Instead, that will be this week's After Dark uh, of course, you can sign up for the After Dark to receive After Dark episodes and ad-free episodes and early access to episodes at patreon.com slash film podcast. Uh, so just letting people know, we will be doing a review of Challengers. Uh, and uh, you can always reach us at slash filmcast at gmail.com. Find more podcast episodes at thefilmcast.com and find us across all platforms at the Filmcast Pod. Let's get into it. The Summer Movie Wager is a game that we play during the summer of each year. You can find the history of the game and also play along at thesummermoviewager.com. Thanks to Dennis, as always, for putting that site together. The general goal of the game is to predict the highest grossing films of the summer in terms of domestic box office in the correct order. The closer you get to the final ranked order, the more points you get. This year, we will begin the summer movie wager on May 2nd, 2024, with the release of The Fall Guy. And it will last through September 2nd, 2024, which is Labor Day, as usual. 
Each one of your 13 picks, 10 movies and three dark horses, gets a single score assigned to it by using the following rules. If you picked uh, movie number one or number 10 correctly, you get 13 points for it. If you pick number two through nine correct, you get 10 points for it. If you picked a movie that's one spot away from its actual placement, you score seven points. Two spots away, five points. And if your picked movie is inside the top 10 at all, you get three points for it. Of course, if it's not in the top 10, you score zero points for it. And each of your picked dark horses gets uh, that's inside the top 10 gets one point. Those are the rules. The winner gets to specify a TV show or film under three hours that everyone else will be uh, watching and talking about. Last year, Peter Serretta won, so he specified Fateful Findings. We'll be putting out that episode sometime before the end of summer. One last thing. You can play along at the summermoviewager.com, but in order to be considered for the leaderboard, you must enter by end of day Wednesday. So as you're listening to this, you know, this is coming out on a Tuesday. Uh, it probably less than 24 hours after you're listening to this right now. Uh, you must enter or to be considered on the leaderboard because the fall guy's coming out on Thursday and box office data will be available and no one can have an unfair advantage except Peter Serretta. Uh, so <laughs> make sure you get those entries in to the summermoviewager.com. All right. Before we start going down what our choices are for 1 through 10 and the Dark Horses, kind of curious what your guys' overall thoughts are on this year's box office. I have to say, with one exception, uh, doesn't seem to me like there's going to be a clear, huge winner at the summer box office this year. In fact, I think a lot of these movies could possibly do very badly. Mm. Uh, but I'm curious, yeah, what, you know, Jermaine, what do you think? You sound like you're nodding in agreement with me. What do you think of this year? 100% this, agree that there's no big standout. But then every other year we say there's not a big standout and something makes <laughs> $600 million. So, yeah. you know, uh, good luck yeah. if. But, Get um, ready for Jeff Nichols, the bike riders. Yeah, yeah, 500 yeah. million. The, all the, the way. bike riders is going all the way to the top. Right. And I, so, yeah. And I, think, and I think in crafting my list this year, I kind of went with a couple Hail Marys. I kind of went with a couple... Um, you know, things I'd like to see. And then I also kind of played the numbers a little bit. I did a little Serretta with not just comps and stuff with like looking at the dates of like, if a movie is really going to be big, that's great. But does it going to make all that money by the end of the summer? You know, so I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of choices that I'm sure everybody's going to make fun of. Um, but yeah, I'm, it was, this was the hardest list we've done in a long, long time. I think so as well. And I think, you know, Jeff Kanata, prior to this podcast, we were saying, you were saying, I have no confidence in my list whatsoever. I, David Chen, feel the same way, honestly, this year, because we have seen so many franchises collapse over the course yeah. of the last two years. Yeah. And so stuff that was like sure bets, Transformers, whatever, you know, like stuff that we thought would definitely do well in the past. Like, I don't even have any confidence that something like Planet of the Apes might do well this year. You know, like yeah. I just have no confidence in anything this year. I agree. And 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 the opposite could also be true where it's like, oh, people, there's this kind of crazy yearning for this franchise that we just Right, people yeah. have just been dying to see a new Twisters movie. That yeah, I, you think Twisters came out of nowhere, Jeff? You know? Come on. Here, here is my criteria for putting something on the top ten list: is uh, did the trailer for the movie have the words, the cursed words, from the mind of John Krasinski? Uh, <laughs> if, if it did, it's on the top ten list. You know, that's me personally. B, Bj Colangelo, this is your first year making a list for the summer movie wager uh, on the podcast. Uh, how, how, what was your experience? Are you, are you feeling like super confident? Or are you like, Ooh, this could go anyway. What, what do you think? Oh, so the first thing I did is considering how many of these movies are franchise players, sequels, legacy sequels, whatever you want to call them. Um, I looked back at their original box office and then remembered <laughs> none of this actually matters because, uh, <laughs> the, the, the landscape of people seeing movies has changed completely. Yeah. Um, but the thing I felt overall is while I feel like there are probably like six or seven on my list that I feel very confidently will be there, I don't think they're going to be huge blowout numbers. They may be in the top 10, but that doesn't mean that they're pulling Barbie Oppenheimer numbers. They just happen to be in the top 10. Yeah. Yeah. I we might have a top 10 who's whose minimum number requirement is lower than we've seen in quite a while. Completely exactly. agree. Completely or, agree. Typically, that would be about yeah. 100 million, right? Yes. Typically, that's the floor. Uh, but it might not be the floor this year. I also wanted to mention something that, was, that I, I thought was kind of interesting and I kind of alluded to in my opening statement, which is uh, usually in summer movie wagers pass, it'd be like, oh, the new Transformers is out, the new Pixar is out, and, and, and it's a sequel to a movie that came out two to three years ago. Typically, that's how it would go. This year we have like, I have like eight to 10 sequels on my top 10 list. 
And they're all sequels to movies that came out in vastly different years. Like one much came, longer sequel ago. To a movie that came out in 2020, 2017, yeah. 1998, you know, like, yeah. it, it, so it's like, I just have no idea what's going on. Peter Serretta, any, any reactions to this year's summer movie wager? Yeah, I thought it was going to be easier this year because there's less movies. There's less yeah. movies this summer than I think there has been in any time fewer, that we've or yeah. fewer. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Wow. Uh, You're going to pay less, for that. It's one not like I. <laughs> wow. It's not like at one point I edited a a big website. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's like you said, there's lots of chapter ones. There's lots of yes. day ones. There's lots of sequels to movies. Some of the sequels are like thirty years since the last one. Do you know what I mean? Right, yep. and, yeah. And um, a movie has never destroyed the box office that's had a sequel that was Maverick. I mean, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but you don't know how to comp that, Jeff. You don't know, yeah. like, what the... Yeah, yeah, you, don't, you yeah. can't compare it to anything. Exactly, so, yeah. So there was, like, 42 movies coming out this summer, and I made my initial list, and it was, like, 17. So I just had to eliminate, what, four to, yeah, to yeah. make my mm -hmm. list? Mm -hmm. But the order is so hard the this order. year. Yes, yep. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm not confident about my list this year. But wow, a, 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 mark a, a that. Lot of, mark that. Mark that clip because he's <laughs> gonna win. And then there it is. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard the entire collective of us so you know lack of confidence we, and so dejected. You know, we have been. Uh, <laughs> We've been humbled. She, yes, we have been humbled by last year's yeah. uh, when we were all so confident that Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy was gonna be the number one movie. <laughs> All of us put it at number one. <laughs> yeah. So obvious. That said, I suspect all of us put the same movie as number one this year as well. But Devendra Hardwar, mm -hmm. any reactions I, to this year? I, I predict mm -hmm. that is not the case. That oh, is, that, that is not the case. I think there's a lot. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Devendra, any reactions to choosing this year's summer movie wager list? I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a tough year, but uh, there, there's some fun stuff. I, I think this year's more exciting because there isn't that like one major Marvel thing. Like there is a Marvel thing, but it's not like... Maybe not the blowout people want it to be. I don't know. Mm. Um, but they're they're just interesting choices. And like, hey, the fact that I can maybe, maybe fit a Jeff Nichols movie into a summer <laughs> top 10 list, that's kind of amazing to me. So I yeah, I had a lot of fun with this year. I think I'm we've also put learned. This out there. Yeah. If it is on your list, you're crushed, Vidra. <laughs> you're crushed. <laughs> that movie's gonna do gangbusters. <laughs> gangbusters. Hey, yeah. hey. Who made fun of Barbie last year? Like I don't not know. Me. Yeah, I, not I, you. I, but nobody. Let's be honest. Nobody. There are made a lot fun of things. Of uh, my, <laughs> the, the thing I think about that scene in Brick, right, where uh, yeah. where where the lead is up against these like uh, these stoners, and he's like, you know, I've had a full night of sleep and several cups of coffee, and I'm this up on the lot of you. I watch trailers, so I think, and a bunch of us watch trailers, so. I at least have a sense of what these movies can be and how they make me feel, <laughs> unlike Jeff and Dave. So all right. Know. Completely fair. I'm excited would, about this year. And thank you. Yeah. I'm happy to have you on, BJ. I think yeah, it is great. anyone's game this year. Like yes. I think it is anyone's game, and that makes this year exciting. So let's get into it, folks. Let's all talk about our number one choice for the summer box office this year. We're going to start with Jermaine Lucier. Are you guys ready? Are you ready for this? Okay. Let's go. The film I'm going to pick, I do not think by the end of their box office runs will be the number one movie. But I think by September 2nd, the film that I pick will be the number one movie this summer. And that is Inside Out 2. Wow. wow. Okay. All right. Now let's get into my thoughts. First of all, because like Davinci just said, watch trailers. I was at CinemaCon. I saw 30 minutes, 30, 30 minutes of the movie. This, by the way, is how you cheat every year, Jeremy. Every and year. Like, you have CinemaCon. It never last, last year, but still. Yeah. Didn't work. Like yeah. cheat. Right. It's, still, it's a little bit. But what are you going to do? <laughs> you guys can come to the CinemaCon. It's easy. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> the... <laughs> I was skeptical about this movie. The 30 minutes kind of blew me away in a way of like, oh, well, they actually captured the magic of the last one. Then you look at kind of Pixar sequels in general. Um, it, it's a mixed bag, but the last two were Incredibles 2, which was 608 million, Toy Story 434. This is not going to do that. I know in the last ten, uh, three, four years, a lot of people have been waiting for Pixar movies at Disney+. Plus. That kind of change. Elemental made the top 10 last time. I'm thinking in my mind, in my... I'm thinking if this movie has like a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, if it's great, it comes out June 16th. It's the second big kids movie of the summer. The only thing before it is Garfield. Uh, I think it could just sit in that like number three, four at the box office all summer and eke out the number one spot. Wow. Okay. Bold choice. Jermaine Luce here. Uh, B, I'm sure we all have thoughts on Inside Out 2 because I, I think many of us put it in our top 10, so we'll get to them. But DJ Colangelo, let's do you next. 
your number one choice for summer of 2024. My number one is also Inside Out 2. Oh, yes. Wow. Yay. The yeah, reason being is because Inside Out is one of those, at this point, holy grail Pixar movies. It is one that people seem to universally love. It has developed a rabid fan base, and a lot of the people who were really into the first Inside Out now have children. So a lot of them are going to really want to see this movie. Uh, and not to mention, Elemental was the huge sleeper hit. Pixar is proving that people are coming back to the theaters if the animated movies are are worth seeing. And I think this is going to be worth seeing. I think people are going to want to see anxiety put on screen because we all have anxiety now and we're all on medication. Oh, man. All right, it, you it, described it's just me, by the way, BJ, the, <laughs> somebody who loves the first Inside Out and now has children and is excited to bring them to the theater. Mm -hmm. Peter Serena, your number t uh, one choice for summer of 2024. See, I thought I was going to be the one in the dark putting Inside Out at number one, what? but it seems Whoa. like everybody is putting Inside Out for, for all the reasons BJ said. She said it better than I could have said. The original made $356 million, and that was almost a decade ago. Uh, I think the only thing that has the potential to hurt this is many of the original actors aren't back for this one. Just two. But, just two. Yeah, but do kids care? No. Do the adults even know probably not you know no one's informed now anymore so i i don't know we know that the we know that number one is either going to be this or the other movie that the other three hosts are going to say <laughs> and it's just a matter of which one does that money so like i, I don't know who's going to show up more is going to be the families or is it going to be the fanboys all right and uh yeah wow Got to check your biases there, uh, uh, Peter Serena. Who knows what the three of us are going to choose. But, all right, th there seems to be an Inside Out 2 contingent brewing. Wow. Devinder Hardwar, let's start with you. Your number one choice of 2024 uh, from regular film cast co-hosts. What do you think? This is a tough one. I think choosing number one was tough because I was vacillating between multiple things. And uh, I think we're seeing a lot of great trailers these days. I'm going to land on Wolverine and Deadpool. Yes. And I think... I Deadpool think it's and tough. Wolverine even. Yeah, yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, I think it's a tough choice because I he know it's an R-rated it movie. Inside Out. <laughs> oh, I did. Oh, wow, it's an R-rated movie. It's coming later in the summer. But let me tell you, folks, that of the things that have given me energy over the last couple months, it is seeing the full trailer for that movie and seeing Hugh Jackman back in action with the claws. Like that, that is really all I need. I think there is room for that thing to do well, even though we've, we haven't seen an R-rated movie kill that much and be number one in in the summer box office like oppenheimer did really well but even then it was like four right four last summer so we shall see i'm not expecting oppenheimer numbers but i think this is the one that's gonna get a ton of people excited even though it's rated r kids are gonna come to this because they're gonna cry to come to this yeah yeah great choice to your hardware jeff canada your choice for number one film of 2024 y'all are all wrong <laughs> all y'all are wrong <laughs> don't you dare pick it the number one movie of the what? summer. I know what you're going to say. Is Garf. No, I'm just kidding. Is <laughs> Despicable Me 4. Wow. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Despicable Me oh, 4 death. is going to be the number one movie of the summer. Those are the three I was most fighting Every with. year that a <laughs> minion slash Despicable Me has gone up against a Pixar, it has beaten the Pixar. Every time. Mm -hmm. Every time. Yep. I don't understand why we think this year will be different. Despicable Me. The, the, this, this is the feel good, take your kids. You know they're going to be entertained and giggling. Not the, ooh, they're going to be wrestling with their deep feelings. And I, I don't know if I have the mental capacity to handle that right now. We'll just wait till we can watch it at home on Disney+. Plus. Let's go and be <laughs> wildly entertained by slapstick buffoonery. Despicable Me 4 will crush... And uh, it's going to be the number one movie of the summer. I I'm going to say I'm having like an out of body experience right now because I literally agree with everything Jeff Kanata just said, other than the number one part. Wow. wow. I agree with yeah. everything Jeff Kanata just said. If we've seen anything in the in this planet happen over the course of the last 10 years, it's uh, the forces of darkness triumphing over good. <laughs> and that is nowhere better summed up anywhere uh, than in, uh, you know, the uh, Illumination Entertainment beating Pixar consistently year to year. So I put Despicable Me over Inside Out on my list, but wow. it is not my number one. My number one is also 
uh, Deadpool versus Wolverine, or Deadpool wow. and Wolverine. Actually. You guys think an R-rated movie is going to be the number one movie the, of the summer? I I do. I don't know. I do. Yeah. I think in I five think... weeks. In five weeks, it's going to outgross every other movie in the summer. It comes out July twenty uh, sixth. Yes. Yes. Barbie I... came out like late July as well. It was so... mid July, but yeah. Yeah. Ju- the, July Deadpool 21st, and Wolverine yeah. has been ranked on multiple lists as the most anticipated film of the summer. Mm-hmm. And so now, obviously, I, the people who had voted in those polls uh, are, aren't probably aren't voting on like on Inside Out Two, like yes. or are probably voting for this. And the people who would vote for Inside Out Two probably aren't uh, old enough to vote in those polls. But I think this has a real shot. First of all, people are hungry for the Marvel guys. The people and want I, their X Men. The That's people the want thing. their X Men. A and lot of the people that want their X Men's parents aren't going to let them come see this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh yeah, mm-hmm. and a lot of people who like X Men got X Men '97 and were yeah. very happy right now. Mm. Thank you or, both for giving me the yeah. clips that I'm going to play at the end of summer when you are proven wrong. It, it uh, could I be the fuel, that. the fuel to really light that X Men fire for a lot of people. Maybe they have forgotten how much yeah. they love the X Men. Now they remember. But yeah, I can't believe I'm like agreeing with Devendra and Jeff here. This bodes incredibly poorly for my list this year. <laughs> this is so right. bad. Those yeah. are all of our number one choices of 2024. But by, by take... the way, yep. I just love how this contest turns Jeff into the cynical. Like he's voting for <laughs> fart jokes over yeah. like yes. something with heart and <laughs> story. And you know what's the funniest thing is? It's never last worked. year. Yes, on our you said recap, you wouldn't do this. I said you I would said not do it. it. You said yeah. you wouldn't do it, Jeff. I said I'm going to follow my heart from now. <laughs> on because i yeah you yeah, know what yeah i can't you so have keeps working out for jeff and he keeps doing it you have so, architected your own doom, great, jeff nothing makes me happier than the fact that i'm the only one that put despicable me for number one that is all that is a bold choice it's, if, if it hits yeah. you win basically. Yeah. 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 well yeah. i don't know about that there's a yeah. lot of he'll have a huge advantage he'll have a huge yeah. jeff yeah. is the minion of this episode hey yeah. capitalism <laughs> gets us all at one point mm, absolutely it's okay absolutely. Let's get to our number two choices. Jermaine Lucier, your number two choice for 2024. My number two is Deadpool and Wolverine uh, for all the reasons you guys said. I mean, and, and also if you look back, the first two Deadpool movies made domestically, 363 million and 324 million. Either one of those could win this summer, right? This, you add in Wolverine, you add in the MCU, you add in the, the it's going to be like Spider-Man No Way Home hype about spoilers and everything. I think, like I said, alluded to with my last pick, I think this is going to be the biggest movie this summer in mid-September. I think, I think the, I think the next year, two or three weeks is going to put it over the top. I think it's going to be a battle there in like the 350, 400 range. Um, unless this gets like a $250 million opening and then we're like, uh, you know, th- then I'll be, you know, then you guys will be right. So I think it's, I think like you said, X-Men, MCU, the late summer and the R-rated kind of makes me th- come back a little bit on it. Um, but yeah, Deadpool Wolverine, my number two, eventual number one, but doesn't matter for this uh, podcast. All right. We shall see. It's, it's not a bad form of logic there, Jermaine. I, I don't necessarily disagree with that one, but let's get to BJ Colangelo's number two choice. What do you think, BJ, for summer of 2024? My number two is Despicable Me 4, because wow. looking at last year, uh, had it not been for Barbie, a massive movie that was for an underserved, greatly underserved audience base, the top two movies of the year would have both been animated. And I think that that is going to be a repeat this year. The only reason I put Inside Out 2 above it is because I think Inside Out 2 is going to get a huge bump from what I will like to call the childless millennials who watch Bluey crowd, uh, myself mm-hmm. included. <laughs> Again, who will I'm describing not be, me. <laughs> who oh, will not Lord. go yeah. see Despicable Me 4, but you can bet your ass I will be at Inside Out 2 opening weekend, and I know there's a lot of people like that, so I'm hoping that that pushes it above Despicable Me 4, but everything that Jeff said is true. Um, if it does get shut out, I understand it, I will be sad, and then I will curse the minion every time I have to drive past it <laughs> looking over me in Los Angeles. Yeah. Facts. I mean, I, I, facts. I, Curse that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Serretta, your number two choice for 2024 summer. You know, the movie I picked for number two, the trailer got more views over all social platforms than mm-hmm. No Way Home. And we know how No Way Home turned out. <laughs> and that movie is Deadpool and Wolverine. And, uh, I don't know. I, I, this could easily be the best, uh, the biggest movie this summer, but uh, I put it at number two. It, <laughs> I, I think at lowest, like look at a movie like Logan that did two hundred twenty six million. If it does Logan numbers, it could be number three. But at highest, it's you know 
or Deadpool has been up, which is like 350 million, but that was pre pandemic. And also Joker, which is 336, which is pre print pre pandemic. But um, I don't know. I think this could go as high as like 400 million, like uh, Jermaine was saying. Also, best, like maybe the best title of any movie this summer, because what, what to get butts in seats? You don't just have Deadpool. You don't just have Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. You have Deadpool, Deadpool and bike Deadpool riders and already. Also, an well, ampersand. It's <laughs> it's the Godzilla X Kong of mm-hmm. the summer, basically. So yeah. Um, the only thing is, can the R rating hurt it? That's right. that's yes. the only question. Yes. Right. All right, Devinder Hardware, you're number two of 20, summer 2024. Yeah. Again, tough list. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna vo- I'm gonna vote for hope. I'm gonna vote for Inside Out two at number two. I do think. Pixar is long due for a big theatrical win. And I've said that for the past several summers and it's been tanking because of Disney plus and because people aren't going to the movie theaters for Pixar movies, unfortunately, Uh, like elemental came back over time, but it barely got into the top 10 last year. That was number 10. Literally. Um, I think, yeah, the demand for this movie is here. I've heard crowds react to the trailer alone. I know there's love for this uh, for inside out one. So I think this could do really well between, you know, Parents, kids, adults, everybody. All right. Inside Out 2, not a, not a bad choice for number two. Jeff Kanata, your number two choice for summer 2024. I mocked you guys for putting Deadpool and Wolverine at number one, and I'm putting it at number two. <laughs> yeah. It's just a massive difference. in mm-hmm. Yeah, huge. Taste, skill, yeah. insight. Three Could points. Could not be so. more different. Yes. Could not be more different. Right? Uh, it is, you, I when everyone else zigs, you zag. Jeff. I zag. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, you know, Barbie coming out in, in ju- late July or mid-July last year, you know, proved that time is not as much of a factor as it maybe once was with these lists. I do think the R rating is a real impediment to getting a four quadrant win here, but I think that there, this movie is the only movie in the entire summer that has got that kind of like, you have to see this in theaters, everything else, even the movie I put ahead of it. You know, I think parents want to bring their kids to thing just to get them out of the house and get them in do have a two hours of break so I do think Despicable Me is going to do better, but this is the only movie that's like people are ravenous for, uh, and you know maybe the R rating won't hold it back as much as I'm even predicting, but I mm-hmm. do think it'll bop it down to number two. So that's where I'm putting it. I feel like there is like a collective amnesia going on here on the podcast. Uh, Deadpool one uh, made three hundred sixty three million dollars domestic in twenty sixteen. Said this, yes, sir. Deadpool two. Three hundred twenty-four million dollars. Twenty eighteen. Like what? What? I'm just saying, twenty sixteen bears the, no relevance to the anything. Rated yeah. R thing did not stop Deadpool's one and two. So uh, you know. Anyway, but hey, that it, year my, it was probably sixth on the list at that m- amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair, Jeff Kanata. Uh, my number two choice of twenty twenty-four, the summer is Despicable Me four. Uh, this Despicable Me three crushed. When that came out, $264 million domestic. I don't see this letting up anytime soon mm. uh, for all the reasons that BJ and, and Jeff Kanata have said. Um, so yeah, th- that's my number two choice. Let's keep going, folks. Let's get to our number threes. Jermaine Lucier, your number three choice for summer 2024. Uh, number three is where I got Despicable Me 4. And um, Dave, you're right that uh, Despicable Me 3 was uh, a big hit at $264 million. But Despicable Me 2 will be $100 million more. So we see a significant mm-hmm. drop there. Now, mm. the difference with that is Minions, which came out like last year, and did $370 million. Now, I think it's going to split the difference. So that's a 260 370 the, I think we're kind of the, like the there. The public's appetite has been mm-hmm. wet for more yeah. Minion action. Yeah, it's not a minion. I know the Minions <laughs> are in this, and it's their franchise, but it's not called Minions. It's Despicable yes. Me. And I think mm-hmm. that's a significant, like, not a significant. It's a number three between a number two and a number one takeaway. So that again, Minions movie, by the way, proof that there is no God, right? Like just one hundred percent, right there. Yeah. Yes. So there you go. I, I again, we we've all discussed it. And I think these three are kind of three of maybe the four that like we're all going to struggle with here. Yeah, I so think like, at number four and beyond is where these lists get real yeah, interesting. Real Absolutely. divergent. Real divergent. Yeah. Agreed. All right, BJ, your number three choice for summer twenty twenty four. 
Um, just gonna echo everything that we've been saying because this is where I'm putting Deadpool mm-hmm. and Wolverine is at number three. <laughs> um, yeah, people really, really want to see this movie. They've been yearning for it for years now. Um, with the way that people have been ravenous over just whatever paparazzi photo they can get from set. Um, so I, I think it's gonna be number three because, and it's really because of its release date. I think. Yeah. Uh, again, just to echo what everyone has already said. It's not, there's a lot of agreement in our top three choices, just like slightly different just ordering. Shocking of positions. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Peter Serretta, your number three? My number three, Dave, is Despicable Me 4. Mm-hmm. This franchise is uh, uh, insane. 1.6 billion domestically. Each movie is averaged 320 million. Uh, the last Minions movie did 370 million. Like, you know, that is enough to be number one of the summer. Like, yes. uh, again, that was before the pandemic though. So, uh, the, I don't know. I, I think the, the, the big question is, are, are families going to wait till it's on home on VOD or are they going to go out to the, the busy theaters this summer? And I, I think if Jeff's in any indication is they're going to go out to the theaters, they want some, some, some time off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, great choice for your top three. That's despicably for Peter's number three choice. Devendra Hardwar, your number three choice for summer 2024. Yeah, despicable me four. There is no God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even need to talk very much yeah. about it. All right, Jeff Kanata, your number three choice? Yeah, I only have uh, one option left of those three, so mine's Inside Out 2. Uh, we, <laughs> we've decided the top three movies. We just don't know which order they're going to be. Uh, I do think... Well- yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I do go think ahead. Inside Out Two is going to do well. I do think uh, I, I, I history has proven uh, Pixar just not up to the task of destroying uh, and yep. one of one of these movies. You know, one of the Minions or Despicable Me movies. Uh, and so I think it's going to be uh, number three. Yeah, guys. I have information for news for you about my number three choice that may shock and upset you. It is not any film that has been mentioned thus far. In oh the man! Oh. So, so we go. this the bike this riders is, here it is, <laughs> Dave. This is going to make or break me, probably, almost definitely break me. But my number three choice for summer twenty twenty four is Bad Boys Ride or Die. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> wow! The wow. slap heard around the world. <laughs> wow. Okay, against here, all data and logic. Yes. <laughs> oh my Here's god. the logic, baby. Here's the logic, folks. Ba- I, I think it's easy to forget. You know, I think bad what Bad Boys Three came out. I, I want to yep. say January of 2020. Yes. 2020. Right. Yes. It was great. Uh, it is easy to forget. How big of a massive hit that movie was. I don't know if Mm -hmm. you guys remember some stuff, other stuff happened in 2020 that distracted us all uh, from how massive a hit Bad Boys 3 was. And (laughs) meanwhile, you got Will Smith coming off. I'm just going to say a major PR event that happened the last couple of years. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, And it is, uh, you know, there's going to be interest in seeing like, hey, what's Will Smith up to? Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, consistently amusing duo on screen. Uh, so I'm going to say that this movie is riding off the heat of all of, of bad boys three, all the stuff that's been wow. happening in the world with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. And it's going to propel this movie to over $200 million at yeah. the box office this summer, which puts it squarely within number three range. Okay. I need to jump in. Please, <laughs> Peter, I want to tag you in after this. <laughs> I am. I, you could not find a bigger Bad Boys fan than I am. I, mm-hmm. I've watched the first mm-hmm. one and so many times. Second one, the third one, I loved it. I saw it in a marathon screening before it came out. Like it only made two hundred six million dollars, dude. Mm-hmm. This is not going to make more than it with the Will Smith stuff. Uh, and they're getting older. And I hope I'm wrong because I'm dying to see it. But uh, yeah, that is the craziest pick uh, we're going to get today. But we, we can rewind this section, just pinpoint the moment where Dave's brain broke during the summer movie wager. Just like, it's, think, think, Bad you Boys, know, guys, yes, he, number three. Think of it less a vote of confidence for the Bad Boys franchise and a, a, vote, of, a vote of no confidence for every other movie coming yeah, out. Wow. Summer, you know, that's a, that's a better way to think of it. Peter Soretta, you had a reaction to my excellent, insightful choice as well, right? <laughs> 
No, I mean, you are right. The last movie did over $200 million, which is three times the amount that the original movie did 25 million, uh, 25 years ago. And, uh, but the question is, will that audience come back again, Dave? Because like they wanted to see those guys get back together. And, uh, I don't know. Was the movie well reviewed? And it looks like, uh, it was 96, it per, well. 96% on RT yeah. yes. audience score. Yeah. Yes. It's certified fresh, uh, which is why, Dave, this is number four on my list. Oh, Ooh. okay. Well, here, here, let me do an impression of half of you. Oh, uh, Deadpool Wolverine coming out too late in the summer. Oh, it's not, it's not enough time. June 7th, baby. Bad <laughs> Boys for Life. Okay. Yeah. This thing's got the whole 80% of the summer to itself. Yeah. It is going to run roughshod wow. over every single one of your choices. Here, here's the thing, Dave, though. I don't think it's going to do over 200 million, but it'll do like yeah. 170. I think that's good enough for four. It'll uh, run Russia like, like a you, big car through a shanty town, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> You've got two rated R movies in your top three, Dave. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Yeah, I know. Bold choice. Wow. Bold choice. But you know, uh, the people who make history are often not the people who you're like, oh, that makes sense what they're doing. So sure. there yeah. you go. All right. Uh, let's yeah, follow the idiots. That's a good idea. <laughs> Let's get to our number four, <laughs> Joe. Wow, Jeff. You're, you're one to talk, Jeff. I oh, believe me. <laughs> Let's get to our number four choices of the year. Jermaine Lucier, what's your number four choice? The number four choice coming in that no Top Gun slot for me is Twisters. Mm. I feel like wow. Twisters is a good old-fashioned dose of action, nostalgia. Mm. It's going to be released in all the premium formats. So we're talking, you know, everybody's going to want to see this in IMAX or D-Box or something like that. Glenn Powell, star on the rise. It's all about the formats, you guys. <laughs> the format makes me a couple extra million here on the bet. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. uh, I will not watch Twisters unless it is in Screen X format. That's exactly. Kind of, that's I mean, that's there, there are several then, Twisters is... happening right now that are yeah. that are hurting the country. Previews for this movie, I guess. Ugh. Oh yeah. God, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, and, and that's sad. Honestly, but... that's why it's not higher up on my list. Is because mm -hmm. like of the real life stuff happening yeah. might hurt the, the yeah. box office. That, yeah. that's, that's absolutely my, true. My, my, same thing for bad boys, like the real life bad boys that are all just hanging around in the world. Oh my god, <laughs> Jeff. having I'm shootouts sorry. on freeways. <laughs> Jeff, that was yeah. terrible. Okay, the real Garfield. Yeah, yeah, just to wrap it up, I, this is I, every once in a while I have like one that's like close to my heart, and I'm such a fan of the first movie that I couldn't put it any lower than this. I want it to be a big, big hit, and uh, I think in like number four. B.J. Colangelo, your number four choice for summer 2024. I feel like I just want to be on Family Feud and just yell like, show me Furiosa, because that's <laughs> yeah. what I want for this. Yeah. Yes. Um, Mad Max Fury Road is one of the greatest theatrical experiences I have ever had in my life. I am hoping to repeat that with Furiosa. I think a lot of people are also hoping that that happens. I'm a little nervous putting it this high because I have to remind myself that film Twitter is not the general public and our hype does not necessarily equate to mm -hmm. box office performance, but I think Fury Furiosa is one of those instances where the taste of a bunch of people who watch nothing but movies all year do align with the general public. People just want to watch shit blow up. Like, it's so fun. Mm -hmm. Well, also, uh, often a movie will do well or badly based on how much people liked the last one. And totally. People freaking love Mad Max Fury Road. Like, it's, yeah. it's a universally so. beloved movie. So it's a great choice. For BJ Colangelo's number four, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Peter Serrata, your number four choice of 2024. He already told us. I already gave oh, you yes. my number That's four right. choice. I, I berated you about Bad Boys Ride yeah. for Die for number yeah. three. And then How I, dare I, said, I put it. Yeah, number in four. Number three. And uh, that's why it's your number four. All right. And uh, Devinder Hardware, your number four choice for summer 2024. Right there with you, BJ. Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Uh, yeah, um, I think, I think that well. this has the potential to do really well because. Film Twitter, yes. Uh, uh, cinephiles loved Fury Road, but it didn't make as much money as I think I wanted it to. It was only like 150-ish million, but I do think the the long tail, the legacy yes. of the yes. love for Fury Road, people watching on video on demand, people hearing the hype from their friends, maybe revisiting it and seeing like, this is actually pretty great. I think there is a lot of hype potential for this movie to do even better than Fury Road did. Absolutely. So, yeah, I agree. Totally yeah, actually, yeah, you guys ahead, are stuck. You guys are stuck in film Twitter land, where like everybody's like <laughs> praise. I know the movie's a good movie. I know film Twitter's so excited, but it made 150 million. There, it, like, did. it did. We have other movies like there's a Sony Pictures animation movie. Those movies usually make about 150 million. Like there's, there's well, th that's big... the question I was going to ask. Is mm -hmm. do we think? I mean, just poll, straw poll. Do we think Furiosa is going to do better or worse 
domestic box office wise than Mad Max Fury Road. Better. Uh, better. I, I think it's better. I actually think it's better because yeah. of the goodwill from the last one. But this movie doesn't Anya have Taylor any big Joy's names. People, Hemsworth. Yeah, Hemsworth, Anya Taylor Joy will bring people to the box oh, office. Hemsworth, yeah. 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 I, I, I think Anya Taylor Joy and Chris Hemsworth are bigger draws than Tom Hardy and Charlie Theron were at that time, in my opinion. Uh, no, so, I agree with you completely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I, I think it's going to do better. Yeah, you I'm know, more uh, pessimistic on it as much as I want to be. I think I, I I'm kind of like 100 percent agree with everything BJ said. Where she said, but you said it's going to the people are going to turn out anyway. I think it's going to be the opposite. Where we think it's going to be this great, and it might be, but then I don't think anybody else is going to show up. For I, I hope it is. I, I mean, I, I hope, hope I'm I wrong. Hope people turn out. Yeah, because I remember going to the theater watching Fury Road with like a, a bunch of different types of friends, and I came out losing my mind about it. And then the normies among us were like, I don't know, it was nice. And I'm, it's weird to be like freaking out about the greatest cinematic experience you've seen in like the last decade. And then people are like, ah, yeah, sure. Nice movie. So I don't know. I hope this one does well. All right. Jeff Kanata, you're number four for summer 2024. Here's where I lose it, guys. Here's where I lose the way. Oh, here it is. Couldn't be as bad as bad boys. <laughs> At least yeah. he knows it. At least he knows it. <laughs> My number four is Fall Guy. Whoa. I got no two. Way. I love that pick. No I way. Think I, love I got it. two words for you guys. Ryan Gosling. Yeah. He's enough to make this movie a hit. Kenuff. It's also oh, the first sorry, movie of the summer. There's no, there's no follow up there. Okay. Um, yeah, that was that was that was, yeah, that that was, was, it, that was it. the entire. I think statement. this movie is going to be awesome. I think it's going to do well. I think number four is way too high, as the rest of our list will qu- quickly reveal. But yeah, I, I, I it is. Uh, as Jermaine just pointed out, the first movie of the summer, I think people are excited about kickstarting the summer and getting their movie on. I think, uh, you know, people just love this actor and why not? He's amazing. He's fun. This looks like a blast. I think it's going to do really well. It's getting, I think it's going to do better than people think. All right. That's the fall guy. It's Jeff Kanata's number four choice. I'm going to say my number four choice inside out too. This is clearly me hmm. betting against Pixar. Actually, if this makes number four on my list, that will make it the best performing Pixar movie since the pandemic, pretty yeah. much, right? Yeah. So, uh, number of, putting it number four is actually a vote of confidence for me. <laughs> now, that said, you guys are probably right that it's going to do way better than number four, but I don't know. Pixar has not shown in many years that it can have a movie perform over $300 million domestically, right? For many years. Uh, Inside Out 1 w- is long history like Disney Plus has conditioned people to wait for Pixar movies so uh, I think this will do better than Elemental you know but I don't think it's going to be a huge massive surprise hit we'll see though this is but Dave this is the first like Pixar sequel in a long time uh, two words for you uh, Peter Serrata Monsters University <laughs> you know that, that movie how well did that do Okay, actually, that one did extremely well, but it did See, way also, worse. <laughs> Toy Story Four, Toy Story Four, which is yes, yeah. exactly. But it did way worse than Monsters Inc. You know, so I, okay, and by way worse, I mean like twenty million dollars less. Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, of my choices, number three and four, these are definitely you know. Sometimes you got to take some big swings, guys, and uh, it's only with the big swings that you can distinguish yourself from the crowd. And sometimes, on a rare occasion, it'll pay off. So that's uh, that's my defense for that. That's my defense for that. Uh, my number four choice, Inside Out Part Two. Okay, let's do number five choices for summer 2024. Jermaine Lucier, your number five choice for summer of 2024. Uh, my number five is The Fall Guy. Um, I've wow. seen I've seen the film. Uh, cheaty, what? cheat, cheaty, cheat. Uh, CinemaCon, mm. they played it. Uh, and it is the blast that uh, we're all hoping it is. I think Ryan Gosling has always been, obviously, a huge star. I think he's kind of at the peak of his powers right now. This movie displays that. It's actually got romance in it, um, which, you know, we, we just watch anybody but you do really well. Uh, so was there kind of like a little bit more interest in a rom-com? But this is a rom-com plus action plus that start of the summer. I think, like we said, there's not that many movies coming out this summer. And so people are like, oh, even if like already saw Apes, already saw Furiosa. Oh, Fall Guy's still playing. We forgot that. You know, uh, so I think it's going to, uh, I think people the are going to watch we it. We forgot that demographic. The, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess, I guess it's not really true. But you know what I mean. I, I, so anyway, number five, I think it's going to be a hit. I think I was struggling with even putting it higher. Um, but then wow. I decided that not. So I yeah, just want to say full shenanigans. First, 
first for me it came on seeing like 10 15 minutes of top gun 2 <laughs> you get a whole ass movie to base your yeah. choice on we gotta yeah. like nullify the points on this one or something yeah absolutely uh he, shenanigan his, his win will be declared invalid at the end of this uh bj colangelo what is your number five choice for summer of 2024 all right, and now this is where I get to take a bit of a big swing uh, wow. for the first time here. Uh, I'm going with A Quiet Place Day One mm-hmm. wow. because hey, people love A Quiet Place, but sure. the, the magic connection here is Joseph Quinn. The way that people love this guy, frankly, we should study some of you. I'm very concerned <laughs> about your love of Joseph Quinn. Um, he's wonderful, don't get me wrong, but like, wow, people are feral for him. Um, and this is kind of his big blockbuster movie. I think that's going to turn people out and adding that to the already like good re- reputation that the series has. I think this is going to be shockingly bigger than we expect. At least that's what I'm hoping for, for the purpose of making this list. I think it's a very solid choice, A Quiet Place Day One. I'm also going to put this out there. Uh, per- personal anecdotal experience, I have seen the trailer for A Quiet Place Day One more than, I'm pretty sure, any other trailer in my oh, entire same. life. Oh, really? same. Yeah. It has played wow. nonstop in front of every single movie I have seen. <laughs> agreed, agreed. For I've the been last, to the like, theater. For the last, like, literal 18 months. You and know, I've honestly, seen it once. I'll see anything that Lupita is in, and now yes. she it's Lupita plus a cat. All right, I'm there. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. All right. Great choice for a quiet place day one uh, day one for your number I was five. Shocked looking how much the first two quiet places yes. made. Mm-hmm. Extremely successful. Yeah. yeah. Ridiculous amounts of money, but nobody knows because it's and the second quiet. one would have done much better if it wasn't a pandemic thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh indeed. All right. That said, guys, I have a feeling, uh, you know, I'm not, not feeling good about how A Quiet Place Day 1 is going to end. Just going to put that out there. Like, mm, I, yeah. I don't know if the humans ah. are going to triumph over the, the quiet creature thingies. All right. <laughs> uh, Peter Serena, your number five film of summer 2024. This one uh, might be, uh, I think I think our bottom of our lists here are all going to be very different. And yeah. this one, I think, is a stab in the dark. And uh, this one is the Garfield movie. Oh man! Good trailer. See, good trailer Whoa. for that. Oh. Now Pratt God is dead. Yeah. Here's the thing. Well, yeah, Chris Pratt voicing an animated character in an animated movie. Th- does that True. not make money? It makes money. And uh, you know, Sony Pictures Animation films all do like 150 million. They all of them look look down their line. All 150. I know kids don't know Garfield today, but I feel like. They're going to go see this. They will know. They will know his name. (laughs) They will know his name. The The fact that this is the first kids movie of the summer made me really consider doing what you're doing now. What Jeff said. Yes. Agreed. Counterpoint. Counterpoint. Yeah. uh, Garfield the movie, which came out in 2004. Yeah. Basically has literally the same words in its title. Uh, only made seventy eight million, uh, seventy five million dollars. The sequel to that movie, Garfield: A Tale of Two Kitties, twenty eight million dollars domestic. And none I, of the people that will see this were born yet. Mm-hmm. And those were live action films. <laughs> I, I, yeah, those movies are cursed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my biggest problem is um, Inside Out two comes out two weeks later. But mm. I think this has potential to be number five. <laughs> I, despite the fact that I'm ridiculing this choice, I did almost have this on my dark horses at one point. So uh, I don't think it's completely unreasonable. Wow, it's not even but, on your dark horses. Uh, That's crap. a little crazy, Dave. Come on now. Um. Yeah. Well, we'll see what's on our dark horses. Uh, you know, I sometimes you gotta gotta make some bold choices. All right. Uh, that is Peter Stratus number five, the Garfield movie. Divin your heart or your number five. Uh, again, uh, Fall Guy. I think wow. Fall Guy. This is the time. Oh, did you see it time. too, Devinger? It's great, right? Uh, yeah, I wish. I wish I did. I wish I had this like inside uh, knowledge, as some people do. Um, no, but I think the Goss has has a lot of the juice from last summer. Um, also, the trailers, which have been for me, this is the one that's been shown repeatedly. Look like a lot of fun. Yeah, um, looks it's... like large scale action. Looks like something that is a big crowd pleaser that people may even want to go back to see again and again because, from what I hear from people who have seen it is that uh, the stunts are very large and spectacular and you kind of want to revisit that. So I think this has potential and it's coming out soon, right? It's going to have the whole summer to ride it. Um, the, the goss power alone, I think will be it. And it looks fantastic. So that's why I don't, for me. Don't forget all the people like me that ha- love the TV show. 
Yes. You can start yes, the crickets them. there, Dave. You them too. The them too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The fall guy is Devinder Harder is number five choice for summer 2024. It was Jeff's number four. J- J- Jeff, what is your number five choice for summer 2024? It's bad boys ride or die. All right. Ooh. Yeah. Very solid. Very solid. I think the, yeah. you know, I think the bad boys are, uh, the, this is Wait, such are a the bad weird... boys good. I think they're good. <laughs> bad boys. <laughs> um, I, uh, I think this is such a weird <sighs> section of the list where it's just a jumble. I was shifting stuff around like, ah, uh, uh. so it, it's a real question mark in this like six, seven, eight spots, you know, it just no idea what yeah. order of, yeah. it's, it's so much of a, a jumble of like, that'll yeah, probably make a hundred, 130, 150. Like there's a bunch of movies in that place. Um, it's a quiet place. Um, but I think bad boys ride or die is, is, is solid. It's going to have an audience. I just don't know the, about the Will Smith of it all and how much that's going to affect it. But I do think this movie is, is like a solid, you can count on 150 million for this movie. I completely agree with Jeff on that one. I only had it slightly higher on my list, but anyway, <laughs> uh, my, so Jeff's number four, uh, five choice is Bad Boys Ride or Die. My number five choice, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Wow. Uh, for the reasons we've already discussed, I think there is a ton of goodwill built up for this movie, right? Like, people loved Mad It's one of the most influential movies that has come out since we have been doing this podcast. And I think they are going to ride that goodwill into the box office this summer. It's going to do better than Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road, $154 million. This is going to do at least 20 to 30 million better than that, which puts it right around this part of the list, hopefully, if the box office goes okay this summer. So that's why my number five choice Man. is Furiosa of Mad Max Saga. Jeff I have Kanata, a completely you're... different feeling about that movie. Hmm. I, I, I think I, I think. Wait, that... question. Jeff, have you watched any trailers for it? <laughs> no. I, so there you go. Yeah. I think it's going to be my favorite movie of the summer. Right, right. I'm fully prepared for that to happen. But again, cynical Jeff is in in command right now. He's, he's got the hat on. Literally, that tells me you li- haven't seen Hemsworth with prosthetic face on. Yes. No, I have not. I didn't Literally, even know Jeff. I, I'm just at 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 the end of last year's summer movie. Week, yes. Jeff Kanata said. Never yeah. again. Wow. Year after year, yeah. I choose the cynical choice mm-hmm, and not mm-hmm. the movies that I think I'll actually like. Yep. And year after year, I, Jeff Kanata, lose. Yep. Next year, I'm going to choose a different path. That yeah, is... I don't know who that person is anymore. <laughs> 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 All right. We anyway, just... what, the, the point I'm trying to make is I don't think John and Jane Q. Mm-hmm. Public feel the way we feel about that franchise. Oh, I, I think it's a depressing, sad look at the future that seems all too plausible, <laughs> but I could be completely wrong. I, I'm rooting for the movie because I think I'm going to love it. Are you rooting for the movie, Jeff? Because I don't think I've seen it on your list yet so far. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll, we'll see. And and you're right. You know, I was uh, doing some, doing some Google, doing some research, doing some Googling, you know, before, uh, uh, we did these lists, and I, I will say that the, some of the sentiment I read online on the message boards was not super positive that this movie would do well. But I think it's going to surprise everyone. I'm I'm up there with BJ, who thinks uh, this movie is going to do pretty well. So, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, it's my number five choice of 2024. Before we continue, folks, let's take a quick break and talk about uh, our guests that we have on the podcast today. Talk about what you guys got going on. Jermaine Lucier, if people are looking for more of your work on the internet, where can they find it? Yeah, uh, I'm one of those people uh, who is still on the site formerly known as Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, at at Jermaine Lucier, all that stuff. And you can find my work over on uh, gizmodo.com. Over uh, io9 is a section there, which is not at all confusing for the last six years. And um, yeah, working on some Planet of the Apes stuff right now, working on some Furiosa stuff right now. So uh, come and check it out. BJ Colangelo. People want to hear more of your work, where they can find it. I am on all forms of social media at BJ Colangelo. I write things over at Slash Film, and I co-host the Coming of Age podcast, This Ends at Prom, and we are starting May Musical Month, so nothing but teen movie musicals. Fun. Exciting. Peter Serretta, where can people find more of your work? 
You can find me on YouTube at Ordinary Adventures. It is a travel channel. We do theme park stuff. We do cruising. Uh, we just got back from a three-week uh, trip to China. We went to Hong Kong. We went to Shanghai. We went to Beijing. We went to all the theme parks there, but we also did uh, cool touristy stuff as well. And we also got off uh, Icon of the Seas, the biggest cruise ship in the entire world. It's huge. If you want to see any of that, go to Ordinary Adventures. Very cool. A huge thanks to uh, all of our guests for joining us here today on the Summer Movie Wager podcast. I want to throw a shout out to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash film podcast is where you can sign up for ad-free episodes, early access to episodes, and exclusive After Dark episodes. As I mentioned this week, we will be covering challengers on the After Dark. Uh, share this video because uh, if you got a laugh out of it, it really helps us to keep the podcast going if you let other people know. Let's get to our number six choices for summer of 2024. Jermaine Lucier, your number six choice. My number six choice is something we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, but around this point, what do we expect a movie to make? 120 million, something like that. So let's throw a couple Ho hopefully numbers more than that. Honestly, yeah, hopefully more. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. 140. 150, yeah, 140. <laughs> perfect. All right, so I'm going to throw a couple numbers at you. 176, 208, and 146. Those are the domestic totals for the last three Planet of the Apes movies. My number six is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, I just watched uh, the the those three movies recently. They're so fantastic. I don't think they have the cultural kind of you know uh, resonance that maybe we thought they had, but Fox and Disney do. They're releasing this movie. I think the trailers look really, really interesting. Um, and I think uh, it's the first kind of big effects movie of the summer. It comes out second weekend. So I think it's going to be a, a pretty good hit. And that's why I have it number six. A couple thoughts on this one. You know, uh, first of all, Planet of the Apes is a franchise that has shown remarkable staying power over many decades. Right. Like the, people just love this concept. Uh, and so I think it really has a chance to do pretty well this summer. The only reason it's not higher up on my list is because uh, War for the Planet of the Apes, despite being very, pretty well reviewed, I think it only did okay, right? It didn't do as well as it did, Dawn, yeah, it, 2014's said, Dawn, right? No, Dawn mistaken. was the biggest one at 208, and yeah. War did 146. But War did 146, so it's kind of like a downward trajectory. So it's like, is this yeah. movie going to do better or worse than War? I think it's going to do better. War, War. the problem with War, like I said, I just watched it like yesterday, yeah. is that it is dark. It is so bleak. There's like very yeah. little. And I don't think this is going to be that. I think this seems like it's the start of a new trajectory in that story. It's obviously not going to be happy. It's about a... You know, uh, us like apes, like, you know, killing humans. But um, yeah, I think I, I, I see your point. But I, even so, if it makes about 140, it, it lands around this spot. Yeah, I mean, based yeah. on the fact that Godzilla X Kong did so well, people are ripe for apes doing apey stuff. <laughs> Love apes. Love the apes. <laughs> apes. Cool. That is the piercing box office insight. People are ripe for apes doing apey stuff. All right. <laughs> BJ Colangelo, your number six choice. So my number six choice is for Twisters. Um, mm. And the thing I kept thinking about is, one, uh, people love Twister. Um, it's great. Uh, Twister was the first movie I ever saw in a drive-in. And if we have forgotten, there is a scene that happens at a drive-in. Um, so that <laughs> mm -hmm. was traumatizing for That's me incredible. as a child. That's incredible. <laughs> it was wonderful, but it was horrifying um <laughs> but also you know glenn powell is kind of this hot ticket right now people really really like him and also this is a movie that i like to factor in as the one movie this year that my mom will see in theaters um and i think that is very similar for a lot of you know middle america i think this is something that they're going to really check out for and also the twisters franchise like they kind of are the tornado movies the same way that people keep trying to make dinosaur movies and they just don't really hit unless it's jurassic park jurassic world godzilla excluded that's his own he's his own thing um but people don't make tornado movies because it then just becomes twister so i think people are going to be like hey we finally get a tornado movie again yeah, it's like Jurassic Park. Uh, that ba no one's el el else is making dinosaur movies, right? Other and than when they the try, we get sixty five, and no one shows up. Yeah, huge bummer. Huge bummer. Uh, I like the idea of the uh, BJ Colangelo's mom index uh, mm. to show how well <laughs> yeah. the movie's gonna do. Right, as mm -hmm. goes BJ Colangelo's mom, so goes 
the summer box office. Right? <laughs> it was in America. Also, yeah. I believe it was Dave Chen who declared Glenn Powell the only America's only movie star. I didn't say only, but I think I he believe has he said wow, the bold. only, the last. I never said only. Movie star. He said only. <laughs> Maybe the only new movie star. I think, Almost seems I think like it a movie is possible that Glenn Powell is a star, and I think this is a great choice. And Twisters is somewhere on my list. I will not say where yet. But uh, BJ Colangelo, great choice for number six, Twisters. Let's move on. Peter Serretta, your number six choice for summer 2024. Uh, I think number six is a good place for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Because mm -hmm. like uh, Jermaine said, you know, 140 million, you, you know, that that's at the lower end of what this French, this modern version of this franchise has done. And I think that's like we're at here. And honestly, like, you know, this being a starting point of like a new trilogy or new uh, have they said in trilogy i think they like no that. they haven't no? but uh it's kind of implied implied yeah um I, I i think that like this has potentially even do more than that one because that last one like you said was dark and it kind of like lost the momentum at the end i think this it's going to have some new momentum and you also have uh you know it's a different company promoting it disney is like having apes riding horses in front of the golden gate bridge and on venice beach and i don't know i think um i don't know i think so, uh, people are going to turn out for this one i think people want to see a movie with apes on horses killing humans <laughs> Based on the reaction at the Golden Gate Bridge, <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. the desire yeah, is yeah. rampant. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Jeff really getting in his uh, his barbs here. That's Peter Serrano's number six choice, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Devendra Hardwar, your number six choice. I think BJ is very smart. I think this is a good spot for Twisters. Yeah. Uh, wow. It has that nostalgia factor. I think it's going to rope in a lot of people who don't typically show up for a lot of the big summer movies. So I I remember the whole Twister thing. Like, I never, it was fine. I think Twister had a really good font and a really good, like, poster, <laughs> right? And a good title. It, but it was never a great font. movie. Um, it was so good that they literally just reused the same font for this movie. Good, good yeah. font, yeah. good font, good yeah. imagery. Tornado twister. Um, yeah, but this looks like more of the same, and I think people just show up just for that and the uh, Glenn Powell smile. So yeah, twisters. All right, that is uh, Devendra's number six choice. Let's get to Jeff Kanata's number six choice for summer twenty twenty four. Jeff Kanata, hit us. I also think BJ is very smart, and Devendra. Less so, but still <laughs> maybe right on with this number six pick. I'm, I'm going with Twisters as well. Twister. Ben Powell, America's movie star. Always bet on Powell. <laughs> He's also in the How comments Powell. That, that, that we didn't get two picks ago when I said it. Everyone was like, it's crap. And now it's like, Glenn Powell is the savior. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, two picks ago, it was crap. But. But, All right. But All by right. the way, not, not that this means anything for box office, but this movie was made for $200 million, reportedly. Jeez. That's a like, lot of Twister money. That's give, a lot of cows. Give, <laughs> yeah. give Minari his money. Cows. Yeah, from yes. the director of Minari, $200 million. Wow. Yes. But, but yes. we have it at like the 140. You have it at the $140 million. I mean, I guess that's domestic, but still, mm -hmm. that doesn't sound good for, yeah. for the $200 million movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yep. Well, it, it brings me no joy to report that my number six choice is not Twisters, but it is another disaster film. It's A Quiet Place Day One. Um, this is, as Jeff indicated, this is a part of the list where the entire logic of how we have chosen these picks in the past has basically been thrown out because we've seen so many franchises, like sure bets, things that were like, oh, the sequel to Blah, the sequel to Blah, you know, Guardians 3, like all the other we've seen all these like sure bets kind of collapse over time. Um, Pixar movies doing well. You know, that, that was a thing that you could set your watch to not too long ago, five, seven years ago, right? Now you can't do that anymore. Uh, a Quiet Place movies, you know, A Quiet Place Part 2 did $163 million, came out during the pandemic. Still like a pretty successful movie. I, I, I Like, is this movie going to do better or worse? I honestly don't know. Like, I've it's it's tough because on the one hand, people love a, a Quiet Place movies. On the other hand, uh, as I indicated, I think people already know how this one's going to end. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't think mm -hmm. I don't think humanity is going to be doing we really need well a prequel. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Pe people love a sequel that doesn't have the original cast and has the subtitle day one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah. 
I, I just honestly have no, this could, uh, you know, this, this is around the 140, $150 million mark could do $30 million better than that. Could, could do $30 million worse. That's why it's my number six choice for summer 2024. Now, you guys have you, uh, razzed me about my cynicism, and rightfully so. Very yes, cynical list. absolutely. But yeah. I think my unifying principle for my list this year is that this is an election year. It's, it's going to be depressing and hard. Everything's crazy. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be bummed out at the movies. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. All the movies that I put in my upper half of my list are like, you're going to mm -hmm. walk out of those movies probably feeling pretty good. I don't yeah. know, Jeff. Yeah. Civil War says otherwise. <laughs> Civil War proves people want to see this country fight each other. Maybe, Civil maybe War, right. a movie, by the way, that would not make the top 10 if yeah. it came out this summer. So at its current box office level. But still doing but, incredibly well yeah, for what it is. Yeah. Uh, agreed, uh, agreed with you there, Devendra. But yeah, uh, it's a great point. I don't think point. you're going to walk out of A Quiet Place day one feeling good. I <laughs> why is that? They could, why? They could why? survive. They could be in another place. They could still be around. They could a less could. quiet place. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's alive it, when everybody else is dead. It's a great point, Jeff. But uh, you know, I didn't think that people would like the first two movies. So uh, you know, here we are. Here we are. Okay, we are at our number seven choices, and I think it's going to start to get pretty spicy from here on out. Jermaine Lucier, what's your number seven choice for summer twenty twenty four? Uh, dad is in the house, even though I'm not a dad, but I feel like a dad with these picks. Uh, my number seven choice is Horizon, an American Saga, Chapter One. Wow. Woo! Wow. Yeah. Uh, I think yep. this movie very uh, interestingly uh, serves an audience that doesn't come out, and that's uh, uh, old men. Uh, <laughs> Um, and uh, old, old white dudes, old, old white, white dudes. dudes. If, if only someone would think of the think, old white yeah, dudes. Think of the old white dudes. <laughs> yeah, but I think the, the, even the Western on the big screen is something that we haven't gotten a lot of in a long time. And uh, Kevin Costner is the name among names in these days, uh, well, kind of forever, but also these days with uh, with Yellowstone and stuff. In terms of like you know the West and kind of cowboys and all this kind of like you know iconography. Uh, and Warner Brothers and they bet so big on this movie, like we mentioned a little bit earlier maybe not on the podcast, is that it's two parts this summer. We got a first part in June and a second part in August. That could cannibalize it a little bit. I'm not really sure how that's going to work. I got kind of a feeling if this is kind of a moderate hit, they'll push part two back a little bit. But I just feel like this again, you know, Top Gun was a great example of um, the the uh, the movies for an audience that we didn't think were going to come out to the movies that they do. And I think Horizon's got a good shot here. This is a bold picture, man. I respect it. I respect it. Horizon and American Saga. Uh, curious if part two is also on your list. That would be even more bold. But Ooh, uh, we'll, we'll find will out see. Yeah. momentarily. But that's Jermaine Lucier's number seven choice, Horizon and American Saga. BJ Colangelo, your number seven choice for summer 2024. My number seven is a movie that I am actually seeing later today after this recording, and I am very nervous that I'm going to see it and I either think this shouldn't be on the list at all or it should be higher. But I'm see I'm I'm going with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Ooh. Um uh I, lo I love the apes. I love the marketing <laughs> that they've been doing with it. I think it's been really, really uh smart to remind people that the apes are cool as hell um and i also really do believe in wes ball i think that he's a really good director i really like the maze runner movies so i'm thinking that this mm -hmm. this is going to be one that's not going to have like a huge opening weekend but will pick up uh a, a lot more in in the weeks that follow that's how i think this is going to go all right it's a great choice kingdom of the planet of the apes is bj's number seven choice for summer 2024 peter serretta let's do your number seven choice Number seven for me is Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, and I I don't agree with the uh, the people here that is you know that everybody's excited to see a new Mad Max film. I I know Mad Max Fury Road was like beloved by film Twitter and by film critics, but uh, most of the everyday dudes I know like like yeah it's, it's good. What, what, what Devinder said, basically. Um, and I, I honestly I I kind of fall in that category. Like I I love the action of Mad Max Fury Road, but like story wise, it's, there's not much there. I don't know. Uh, I I think people are going to show up for this, but I don't think people are as excited for this as the the rest of the crew here. Uh, but I think it it could still do like 130 million, and this is where we're at, number seven. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, pretty reasonable choice for number seven, 
Furiosa of Mad Max Saga. It's Peter's choice for number seven uh, of summer 2024. All right, Devendra Hardwar, your number seven choice for summer 2024. I'm going with the apes. I think yeah. I think this is a good spot for the apes movies. And also, again, I don't think those other movies got as much love as we wanted them to. They did pretty well. But I, I thought like that original trilogy, especially the last two were not the original, but the reboot trilogy were masterpieces, you know, so I'm hoping like they can capture some of that. Maybe some of the people who saw that at home and maybe even grew up with those movies because it's been a while. I think there's going to be a big audience for this thing. And yeah, hopefully it's it's being marketed better than the others, because all I remember from the last other movies is that the posters were cool, but they didn't really do anything to push those movies. I'm, I'm excited for this one. <laughs> I also, I'll just reveal right now, I also put this at my number seven, and I, I, I think it people love the apes, but I also think, yeah, like, honestly, I think war was mm-hmm. not received very well. Like, yeah. uh, first of all, I, I honestly don't think it really delivered on its title. I just put that out there. Like, I think people were expecting a huge conflict, and that didn't really happen in that movie. Also, as people pointed out in this podcast, it, very dark. So it's got a lot going against it, uh, but I st- still think it does have staying power. So that's why it's like kind of these forces kind of push against each other and therefore it ends up kind of at number seven for me. But Jeff Kanata, curious what your number seven pick is for summer 2024. I remain in lockstep with BJ and Devendra and unfortunately, Dave, I'm also <laughs> picking kingdom of the planet of the apes at number seven. All right. Uh, Let's get to the final three choices on each of our lists then, folks. We're really getting down to it now. Jermaine Lucier, your number eight choice for summer 2024. Yeah, my my last three are are, are all movies that we've talked about before and that you guys are much higher on than I am uh, for just sequel reasons and whatever. Uh, And I hope I'm wrong because I want them all to be great. My number eight is Furiosa. Um, yeah. and I think it's it, Peter just kind of said it there. It's like, I want, I think, I think we're going to turn out and love it. The people who listen to the film cast. Um, and I think when I see the trailers in front of like challengers this past weekend, it goes crickets. Like nobody even cared. Uh, and I, uh, again, and I hope I'm wrong, but, uh, I think it's going to be an okay hit, but not the hit that we all, that Warner brothers and others may expect it to be. Man. I gotta say, I gotta say, it kind of bums me out <laughs> to hear you guys talk about why you don't think Furious is gonna do well. Because uh, I'm just gonna say, guys, I don't have a lot going for me right now. You know, like, <laughs> and the idea that Furious is gonna do well is kind of driving me through the month of May. You know, uh, not even my birthday during this month is helping me out right now. So, like, uh, Furiosa, I'm really hanging all my hopes on that, and. We need to. You got you know, get guy. You, you got apes. You got it all. <laughs> That's you're, you're eating today. Those Dave, are... we need to. We need to get you a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave needs one more thing to do. Yeah, we tried crocheting. Yeah, yeah. BJ Colangelo, your number eight choice for summer 2024. For the record, I also don't have a lot going for me, which is why I put Furiosa at number four. This is called manifesting. Yes, absolutely. Um, Make it happen. Make it happen. But yeah. my Some number of us eight, are brave. Yeah. My number eight is a movie that I wish in my soul it does better than this. I hope I am very wrong because this is where I put The Fall Guy, a movie that looks like everything I've ever wanted and Gosling. It, I mean, speaking of like the, the publicities of other movies, Gosling – Uh, promoting the fall guy has been one of my favorite things all spring because he clearly believes in this movie so much and his excitement i hope will get people who might not turn out for this movie to get excited and turn out for it but i am just so afraid of people not wanting to check this out for whatever reason but god i hope they do because it looks so good yeah uh, I think this is a great choice. I'll just reveal that like the fall guy is also at this slot for me. Honestly, I think a really good comp is bullet train, right? Wasn't that David Lich's last movie that, that, yes. made, a, that made around a hundred million dollars. I think this is going to do a little bit better than that. Cause it's going to get the Gosling bump. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also I haven't seen the trailer, but as I indicated on the last podcast, I've listened to them. Just the sound of the trailer. The sound, Cause <laughs> I don't watch them, So I just yeah. like kind of close my eyes or look to the side during the trailer and this is one of the most enjoyable sounding trailers yeah. of the summer. Uh, so I feel like the fall guy is going to do pretty well 
And that rounds it out at the bottom of the list for me, too. And they they took over the Waterworld stunt show for the month. So if you want to see Waterworld stunt show, you're going to have to wait because now it's Fall Guy. And I really want to go see that, too. Yeah. Uh, I hope they the change you, it into yeah, totally. the Horizon in America saga stunt mm-hmm. show. By the way, this <laughs> weekend, th- this weekend, I went to the Waterworld stunt show and uh, the, the uh, David Leach, uh, Lynch, Leach? How do you Lich? pronounce that? Lich? Yeah. It's Leech, I think. Uh, Leech? Yeah. He came out and also, you know, the, the stars of the film and like it was like this big thing. It was it was really cool. Yeah. Uh no movie that's replacing Waterworld on anything could do badly. Okay. <laughs> Peter Serena, your number eight choice for summer twenty twenty four. Uh, the fact that none of you have mentioned this movie worries me. <laughs> it worries, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, is this a bad choice? Okay. My number eight, I, I think audiences seem hungry for a comedy. Mm-hmm. And a comedy with a very recon- recognizable cast. And uh, something that families might be interested in. Uh, So I put as my number eight, <laughs> if. Or Fly I if. In. Uh-huh. It's a big yeah. if. Yeah, yeah. Uh, big if, big if, big if. You, I think this could do like 120 million, maybe. Possibly. I'm you right now that What's everybody involved in it wants it to make way more than that. <laughs> if it's 120 I, million, it's a bomb. I yeah. also, uh, um, I think Peter is like, I, I like disagree with the way Peter has characterized this movie. I think this is purely a family film. Like this mm-hmm. is aimed directly at kids. In in my opinion, I don't think this is gonna. This is going for that demographic. This is not yeah. like. Uh, like adults are going to go see this, and by the way, maybe they'll bring their kids. This is like a, a kids movie, is my sense. Uh, that said, I think number eight, very reasonable slot for this this movie, um, and I think it could do really, really well. So it has Ryan Reynolds. It's the other Ryan Reynolds movie. Most importantly, from the mind of John Krasinski, right? Like mm-hmm. that, that's the thing I yeah. look for. <laughs> I love Ryan Reynolds, but mind. I don't want to see his face. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's it. He's it. You'll see his he's, face. He's either got to be under a mask or horribly <laughs> scarred. <right? laughs> exactly. like exactly. The only condition under which Jeff will see. I am you. dying to see Ryan Reynolds in, in a summer movie, but not his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Peter's number eight choice is if defend your heart or your number eight choice for summer of 2024. I'm going with bad boys. I think, I think oh, it wow. is a good time for bad boys i think it will do better than uh maybe a lot of people expect but the the last one was really good i think it reminded people like this format like this buddy cop you know formula works really well the directors are back right from from that last one i thought they did a surprisingly great job um so yeah i'm, I'm down for bad boys and i think this could just be like a fun summer action film you know yeah you know Really, really feeling a little self conscious about putting the bad boys so far up my list, guys. Yeah, not, not gonna lie. Not gonna a couple lie. of us really haven't cool. even mentioned it, Dave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty quiet on the bad boys front, actually. Pretty quiet. Get yeah, a ride or cool. die with your choices, Dave. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That is true. That is true. Go with your heart. Jeff Kanata, your number eight choice for summer 2024. Well, I mean, this is BJ's number eight was my number four. So it's only fair that my number eight is her number four, Furiosa. A Mad Max story, tale, what? Saga. Sequel? Saga. Saga. Uh, I, we've, we've talked about it at length. I am rooting for this movie, but I, I think it will underperform. Well, actually, I don't think it's going to underperform. I think it's going to perform exactly, you know, what... The first one did not was not a massive hit. I think it's going to be pretty solid, and I think it's going to be a great movie. I can't wait to see it, but uh, I think number eight is right where it belongs. All right. All right, Jeff, this is going to be the thing we give you a heart. This is, you're going to point to this later on. You're going to be like, why didn't Perhaps. I follow my heart with this movie, right? Yeah, this might be the one that kills me. This is like a Sisyphean thing where every year Jeff chooses the cynical <laughs> choice. <laughs> and, then, and then needs to roll the boulder back up. push my cynicism up the yeah, mountain up every year. Up the mountain year. again, every year, Jeff, every year. All right, uh, I've already mentioned my number eight choice, The Fall Guy, right? Like, this is going to do very well. It's going to be a hit, but it's not going to do much better than this. It's going to end up being around 130, 150. That's my guess. So the fall guy, my number eight choice of summer 2024. Final two choices. Jermaine Lucier, your number nine choice for summer 2024. Uh, my number nine is Quiet Place Day One. Um, I think it is going to do fairly well. I think they're... Obviously, is an appetite for horror in the marketplace, but even the biggest horror hits don't do like top five numbers, right? So I think 
if anything could do it, it is a quiet place. It's the name brand of the horror of the season. Um, uh, but you know, uh, Lupito and Joe, I think I'm a little more bullish than, uh, than BJ is on them. Um, as much as I love them, especially Lupita. Uh, so I think it's going to do okay, but I don't think it's going to, uh, do as much as we'd all hope. Quick detour. This year has, has been pretty rough for horror movies, I think so far. Right. Um, Good in terms of the quality of horror mm-hmm. movies. Like we've gotten movies like Abigail and The First Omen and so on, but none of them have been massive breakout hits or very few of them have been massive breakout hits like they have been in years past. Uh, so I am curious if there is going to be a horror movie that will break out this summer. Uh, and A Quiet Place Day One is yeah. is really... Is the obvious. Know, is yeah. the obvious There's one. a number of them saying. though. There's a number of yeah. like kind of unknown quantities that could all kind of c- catch the zeitgeist in some totally. weird way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But as you guys have been pointing out, uh, we're living through an election year. So we are yeah. living through the horror movie. That's Why right. would you go to the cinema for that? You know? Yeah. Uh, thinking of this year's horror movies, by the way, uh, Abigail, The First Omen, Imaginary, Late Night with the Devil, Immaculate, mm-hmm. and Night Swim. You know, some of those movies did pretty well, but like none of them have been massive breakaway successes like uh, your Barbarians or your Smile. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious, like where horror is going to go this year, but a quiet place day one could be when, uh, we see it take prominence again, BJ Colangelo, your number nine choice for summer of 2024. My number nine choice is another sequel. And this is where I'm putting bad boys ride or die. I mm. still hate that the fourth bad boys movie is not bad boys for life. That was it's true. It's Very bad. short-sighted. For, so for life. Right? For so life, short-sighted yeah. of them. Um, could have been called Ride or Die, the third one. Should have been. It yeah. should have been. Absolutely, it should have been. This was such a missed opportunity. Um, but I I love all the Bad Boys movies a lot. I am actually very much rooting for a return for Will Smith. And I think if he's going to make his big comeback return after you know yes. the, the slap, play in Mike Lowry, that's the way to do it. Because it's... It is the most Will Smith character in his oeuvre. So I'm very excited to see this. I think it's going to be very, very fun. Um, and I think it'll do surprisingly better than people think. Everyone's going to watch surpri- it waiting for the slap joke, by the way. Like waiting for... Gonna oh, do, yeah. Oh, gonna, 100% yes. Gonna come it? Yeah. It's yeah. going to surprise everyone how well it does. Every, well, I'm just putting a call it now. Mm-hmm. Bad oh. Boys, Ryder, it's going to surprise everyone how well it does. It's, it's like you've got stake in it. It's going to be glorious. Yeah. It's going to be glorious. Peter Serretta, your number nine choice for summer 2024. This is the movie that I tossed over the most. I was like, I don't know. I don't know about this movie and what it could do. My feeling watching the trailer is that this movie is not going to do that well. But the fir- when the first one came out, I'm talking about Twisters. When the original came out nearly 30 years ago, and I saw it in the theater. I I, I loved it. Uh, there's so many people that love that original movie, but none of the cast is coming back, as far as I know. Uh, and uh, or at least as far as their advertising, so, uh, several of them have sadly passed away. Yes, in the yes, time since, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, you know, most people, Dave, you bring this up constantly on this last one, on, on the film cast. Is uh, most people who see movies now weren't even born when that movie came out yeah. so uh do they even know i don't know that film did 241 million dollars when it came out which would be like a movie doing 500 million dollars stay with inflation uh and that's not even accounting to like a movie like this being in like large format so it'd probably be like that movie doing like 600 or 700 today uh which is insane so you know could this the question is This is the question. Is this going to be Top Gun Maverick or is this going to be Independence Day Resurgence? And I think it's going to lean towards the the latter of those two. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think the latter of those two still could make a number nine. Yeah. I don't know. What is. Just split the difference there. I mean, I I see your points, but um, yeah. (laughs) that's, That's a huge, huge, huge gap right there. Yeah, I yeah. cannot believe you just put Twisters in the same category as Independence Day Resurgence. Oh my god! <laughs> well, you <laughs> know, they came out ninety six. I, I the first, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. only thing I thought about. Ugh, was that. First yeah. Twister came out the same year as Independence Day. Wow, yeah, that's, pretty yeah. that's what yes, I meant. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right, uh, that is Peter Sreda's number nine choice for summer twenty twenty four. Twisters, Devendra, your number nine choice for summer twenty twenty four. I have to tell you all the weirdest experience in the theaters this year was sitting down and watching a trailer for a Kevin Costner movie. 
<laughs> just being like, well, this, Yellowstone on the big screen? I don't know. Uh, my number nine is Horizon American Saga Part 1. I think All right. this is the thing. It's going to get a lot of people to theaters. This is going to be like a thing we don't quite expect. But it's Costner. People want to see Costner. So I, I think that alone is the thing, even though I, I have very little hope for this thing like to actually be good. That's me. All right. Frontier and American Saga Chapter 1. That's Devendra's number nine choice. Jeff Kanata, your number nine choice. I continue to agree with Jermaine. I'm putting A Quiet Place, day one, as my number nine. Um, yeah. It's, you know, I think the, I was shocked to look at the box office of the first two Quiet Place movies yeah. and see how mm-hmm. well they did. I don't think this one will do as well as the first two, but I think it'll land at the bottom of a top ten in a, in a year with pretty low average box office in the top 10. All right. Not a bad choice for number nine. My number nine choice is if from the mind of John Krasinski, I think this, this movie is going to open around 40 to $50 million calling it right now, 40, $50 million that could drive it well above a hundred million domestic. uh, And it puts it right around the eight or nine slot on the top 10 list. So I think it's going to be, I have absolutely zero interest in seeing this film, uh, but it is a movie that I think will do pretty well. That's why If is my number nine choice of 2024. Finally, good choice from you, Dave. Finally. (laughs) Took a while. Took nine (laughs) picks. How dare you all? Ride or die. Uh, Okay. Let's get to our final choices. Before we get to our dark horses, this is number 10. This choice often can swing the entire competition is whether you nail number 10 dead on or not. Hardest one to get right. Yeah. Big, big points. If you big, can do big it. points, here we go. You get 13 points. If you get number 10, correct. Jermaine Lucier, what is your number 10 choice for 2024? Um, mine is bad boys, ride or die. And I am also now apparently riding or dying with this pick. Uh, and I will say that over the course of the last hour and a half talking to you all, I have become less, confident in this pick um, because and especially because i like i said earlier i'm a huge bad boys fan i just watched the trailer as a fan and had i was like oh really it doesn't look like anything now they're like making old man jokes i don't know and i thought the will smith of it do we really think people are still gonna like instantly forgive him yes 100 percent um but so yeah it just when i just like peter did i put up like 15 movies and kind of you know twiddled them down and bad boys ended up in this spot and uh I was like, let's just uh, let's go with God, and so I'm riding or dying. <laughs> Let it ride, Bad boys, ride or die. Such a Let such a confident defense. Of your- <laughs> I just I did it, and uh, I made God the mercy of my soul. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that how we all do this? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Jermaine, you're gonna regret not following your heart at the end of the summer. Calling it right now, you're gonna be like, man, I, I should have. I like the Bad Boys, and I should have put him higher up on the list. But Bad Boys, Ride or Die is Jermaine Lucier's number 10. BJ Colangelo, mm-hmm. your number 10 choice for summer 2024. I just want the record to state that I hate that this movie is on this list because wow. I have no interest in it whatsoever. But I do understand that it's going to, I think it's going to end up somewhere. But mm-hmm. I put it at 10 for my own sanity. And it is it is the Costner movie. It is Horizon and American Saga Part 1 because, yes, the Yellowstone of it, yes, the dad movie of it, all of that I understand. But do you know who else is going to turn out to see this movie? All those psychos who were really into Sound of Freedom. Oh, those absolutely. Those weirdos are going to yeah. show up to watch this movie. And uh, let it be known, this is a square rectangle situation. Not everybody who likes Yellowstone is a weirdo who's into Sound of Freedom, but every weirdo who's into Sound of Freedom is into Yellowstone. Um, so I, I think this is... like. This, I am so scared, it's going to be this like huge runaway success, mm-hmm. and then we're going to get a ton of these weird movies that conservatives like. I'm so scared of it, um, but I do think it's going to be the top 10. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a decent choice. It's just such a, it's such a bold swing, right? We haven't even really talked about it, but uh, Kevin Costner pretty much self-financed this movie mm-hmm. right yeah two movies two movies it's a huge i think paramount is distributing if i'm not mistaken I'm not warner brothers a uh, warner brothers yeah and it's like a big uh swing because they're releasing these two movies just months apart weeks if, if weeks. one of them doesn't do well 
then it's like probably the second one's not going to do well either. When when uh, has this strategy ever hurt? You know, a dual film release. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, I remember like what Matrix two Matrix. and three came out within six months of each other, but that yeah. was a long time ago. And Kill Bill uh, felt like that was close together. As yeah. I recall. So, yeah. and that didn't work re- out so well for that. They're really yeah. putting a lot of chips on the Kevin Costner of it all, and so, but hey. Uh, like we're like I, I've said on the podcast, we've seen auteur directors like mm-hmm. uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola and Kevin Costner say, "Hey, look, I know better than the studio system what works. Yep. I'm going to make yeah. my own movie, and we'll see how well it does." If if yeah. only Kevin Costner were a movie star like Glenn Powell. <laughs> Indeed, I think Indeed. Jeff Kanata is actually making fun of me. That he, I think Jeff Kanata is being sarcastic. There. I am. But we'll see. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Jeff Kanata, curious to see where Her- Horizon and American Saga is on your. Uh, uh, list you want there. me to tell you? It's my number ten. What? <laughs> DJ's right. What? Jermaine is right. Horizon, an American saga, number ten. Meow, 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 meow. Jeff, tell us about your choice here at, at number ten. I think that I mean everybody else has said it very, very well. I think this is uh, an audience that will come out to one movie. They will come out for mm-hmm. one movie mm-hmm. begrudgingly. And th- a couple of years ago, it was uh, Top Gun Maverick. And they came out and like everybody I know over 60 had seen Top Gun Maverick. Everybody I know over 60 will have will have seen Horizon and American Saga. And that's I think that's going to carry this movie uh, into the top 10. It's going to hang it right there at the edge at number 10. Let me ask you guys this. What was the last... Western film that made over a hundred million dollars. Maybe Dances with Wolves, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I think you know this movie could be good. It's definitely going to be interesting, but I don't know that people's hunger for westerns is that high. At least Dude, from a Yellowstone it's on is TV. a massive yeah, hit. That's, that's right. We have westerns at home, right? Like you can watch Yellowstone at home. Which is why then this becomes the yes. big thing to do with like, we're going to go see it in the big screen. We're going to get facts and it's going to be yeah. a big event. He left that show to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see, after Barbie last year, we're all looking for the movie that's going to serve the underserved audience. And maybe yeah. this is that. Maybe this is the thing that's going to yes. bring those people to theaters. But I don't know. And it's unfortunately, it is an election year, and people are drunk as hell off of patriotism in America. Mm-hmm, and I'm mm-hmm. looking, Dave, to answer your question. I, I just like, did a quick Google search, and um, the, the 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 kind of comp here is True Grit. I think maybe like right. 2010. I'm looking at that at 171 domestic, um, it, uh, which is pretty good, uh, really good actually. Uh, Django Unchained is 162. That doesn't really count. That's more Tarantino, <laughs> yeah. um, and. Uh, yeah, but it's it, it, it is very sparse. It's like the Magnificent Seven, but right. even that Magnificent Seven in 2016, 93 million dollars. So 93 million puts it in yeah this puts area. it around this part in the list. Yeah, so yeah, it's possible. It's possible, and I don't know. I feel like front th- this movie Horizon is either going to do really well and therefore be way higher on the list. Or completely tank. That's my guess. That's my guess. But and let it be known. I hope it doesn't make the list. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't because that will set such a dangerous well, precedent. Here's the yeah. other thing. And I don't think that the same audience that is it, it, potentially going to this movie is the same audience that went to the Star Wars special editions when they were released in theaters. But I remember when mm-hmm. they did those and they came out, they were the other, the last one was still in the theater when the next one came out and people would go see like, empire and then go see return of the jedi they would set up their yeah. screenings so i'm wondering since this this the second part comes out in august will people do a double header it, helping this one even get higher it could From i can see the entire family's to coming to this right yeah yeah I do, but so also we're... also guys i have two words to say to you <laughs> the, the postman that was a 1997 film yeah yeah but, let's let's look at 1997 yeah there's a comps. lot going wrong there oh yeah because oh, we haven't brought up movies from the 90s all this episode <laughs> anyway uh the postman that was kevin costner's last and uh, widely regarded as not a very good film right and so you guys are assuming the movie's gonna be great right uh, or at least oh, good well, enough. No, absolutely not. 
get the audience. Like, that's all. But here's the thing: like we're talking about this, like it'll be some sort of conservative screed. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if it will be. But like, if, if this were uh, a Clint yeah. Eastwood movie, I would I would expect the that screed. This one, it could just be like a straight up a, a heroic Western figure, and maybe that's yeah. enough for these yeah. audiences. Yeah, you know? yeah. We I don't, like we, how was it Peter that was suggesting that people will go from one to the other yeah like yeah. a yeah, yeah. like a barbenheimer situation or in this case it would be horizon i mean if theaters were smart <laughs> wow wow <laughs> see I, I mashed the two <laughs> titles together that's one of the worst things i've Clever. ever heard Joe. <laughs> wow that's bad if theaters were smart though they would book like continual screenings like you Absolutely. come in and like you just sit through the whole thing you know yeah. Yeah, but they gotta wait till August, and then and then we'll see if this movie even Mm -hmm. anybody cares at that point. So right, right. It's this is such a huge question mark. This one, right? Like that's what makes it kind of exciting, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. All right, Divinger Hardware, you're number ten for summer 2024. My number ten has shifted all over the place, but at this point, I think John Krasinski has made a deal with the devil, Mm -hmm. and uh, Quiet Place Day One is where I'm going for for this one. I think. It'll do well enough, has good, has a good cast, like horror tends to do okay in the summer sometimes, and this could be like a nice uh, reprieve from a lot of the other stuff. So it's a good spot for Quiet Place. There were a lot of things I was considering for this. Like, guys, we're getting a whole new Alien movie this year, you know, but yeah. only two really weeks late, of the summer movie. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. All right. A great choice for number 10. Hori- uh, sorry, uh, your number 10 choice, A Quiet Place Day 1. My number 10 choice for summer 2024 is Twisters. Uh, hmm. I'm put. I'm putting this way hmm. down there. Wow. I think we flopped ten and fours, Dave. I believe Twister. Yeah, and yeah. And I, I oh, mean, you had three. I, I think on the one hand, it's got the Glenn Powell going for it. You know, um, America's only oh, movie star. Yeah, uh, only movie star. Uh, not what I said. Uh, <laughs> but also, it has uh, this other. You know, there's actually tornadoes going on in the country that are wreaking havoc and devastation. That I think that's gonna. Uh, make people less willing to turn out to go see this movie. And so I think it's going to, like, it, it's very questionable how well this movie will actually do. I just remember, guys, 1996 was an incredible year for movies. Uh, we had Twister and also The Rock came out that year. Yeah. Remember that? Like, that was just like an amazing summer. For, I, would, did Titanic also come out in 20, 1996? No. Right? Like, I think Mission Impossible, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's just like, wow, there was just banger after banger coming out. Uh, and movies were at you know the height of their cultural supremacy in the United States, and that moment is Seinfeld long was on TV. Seinfeld was on TV just doubting making, that movies are a thing anymore. Right. Instead of making Netflix movies and doubting that movies are a thing, agreed. So yeah, uh, I think that Twisters it's uh, gonna do okay. It's gonna do okay but it is not going to dominate as a lot of people have on their list. So those are our top 10 choices for summer 2024. Now, of course, we also have... Dave, you our... didn't get my top 10 or my number yeah, yeah. 10. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Peter. I didn't. I missed that. I apologize. Um, Peter Serena, what is your number 10 choice for uh, summer 2024? Uh, my number 10 is A Quiet Place, day one. Uh, you know, the first one did 190. The second film did 160 during a pandemic but i you know that would put this one much higher but i think you know this doesn't have the same actors it's a prequel uh i it's a different type of movie uh i'm guessing this is going to do a bit less so i I, i'm i number 10 seems like a good spot for me yeah sorry about that peter i'm for those who don't know i'm I'm like taking notes as we're going along the show so i uh, i I apologize if i stumble here and there but yes peter serena's number 10 choice a quiet place day one the same as divinger hardware's number 10 choice so a lot of agreement i would say looking at these lists overall by the way uh, we have mostly the same movies on all of our lists um yeah a couple of us don't have if on the list right um but Otherwise, and and a couple of us don't have Horizon in American Saga Chapter One. One of us is Garfield. Mm-hmm. One of us is Garfield. But otherwise, like these are the same movies. It's just. Am like, I the which... only one that has Garfield? Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, that was probably a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or you're the two-time champ, and we're or, all yeah, idiots, or the, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the dynasty continues. Yeah, the dynasty continues. All right. Has Chris Pratt voiced any animated characters that haven't that has made under like a hundred million dollars? <laughs> No, that's but it's actually small the sample key. size. And, I, <laughs> yeah. and also, like, that's also, you have to think that they're not coming from Chris Pratt. They're coming for the IP of the Lego right. movie and 
Super mm. Mario. Yeah, and Super yeah. Mario. Which, I feel like which of like those the three? Lasagna eating Friday. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Which IP is not as powerful? <laughs> mm. Between the Lego Movie, Mar- Super Mario Brothers, and Garfield. I will say Garfield which, is having wait, wait, a resurgence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Garfield is having a resurgence with people making kind of like bootleg Bart Simpson stuff, but with Garfield. So like, yep. there's that. But this movie is not courting that audience. No. I think yeah. if you t- brought in my seven-year-old and and showed him a picture <laughs> of Garfield and said, I will buy you any toy you want if you can tell me who that is, he would be like, Orange Cat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'd go wow. deep cut. He'd say Heathcliff. But, will, <laughs> but, but here, here's the thing. Will uh, the parents that are going to take the kids to the movies that pay for the movies know who the cat is? I mean, yeah. that, that, that is, is true. A good point. And I will say, Maybe. as much as it kills me, that baby Garfield is real cute. That's real cute. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's get to our dark horses. This is uh, three cho- th- three movies we think might end up in the top 10. If they do end up in the top 10, we get one point for them each. Movies we weren't confident enough to put on our top 10, but hey, maybe they're going to do okay. Maybe they're going to do okay. Jermaine, let's start with you. What were your three dark horses for this year? Yeah, uh, my three dark horses are, we were just joking about it, Garfield as one. Uh, If uh, is a big if, as we joked about. Uh, And so maybe it does great, maybe it doesn't. I dark horse it. And my third one is one, uh, I struggled again with this. I have four other ones below it. Uh, but I went with Fly Me to the Moon, which is the uh, mm-hmm. the Channing Tatum and Scarlett Johansson kind of romance slash moon landing movie, which looks really interesting, could be really great, or it could just go nowhere. And so it's a dark horse for me. Yeah. Um, Anyone But You was the last big romantic comedy that was in theaters. That movie made $88 million domestically uh, and is, is, you know, some of the best that a romantic comedy has done in a while. And here's another romantic comedy that stars Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. So it's like, oh, maybe this is going to be yeah. a breakout hit of the summer, right? Uh, I think it's the only rom-com any of us have listed so far, correct? Like I said, so, Fall Guy is kind of kind rom-com of, yeah. centric, the, but yeah. Right, 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 right. So yeah, this could definitely be uh, a breakout hit. Uh, we will see about that. But interesting choices for Jermaine's Dark Horses. That's Garfield, If, and Fly Me to the Moon. BJ Colangelo, hit us up with your Dark Horses. All right, my Dark Horses. I also went with Garfield, um, as much as it pains me. Um, I will say I did not include If, because in my brain, I feel like imaginary might actually hurt If. Um, But I also included Alien Romulus, uh, a movie that I want to do well and am terrified it won't. And another movie I really want to do well, and I think this one has legs, but its release date is going to be what hurts it. I went with Trap. I went with M. Night Shyamalan's mm. Trap because nice, yes. give me Josh Hartnett being a weirdo for an hour and a half or however long this movie is. That movie looks so awesome and I yeah, can't wait. Yeah. And I'm also no. Shyamalan truther. So, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm all about it. All right. Great choices for BJ Colangelo's Dark Horses. Peter Serretta, your three Dark Horse picks. Uh, my first dark horse is the fall guy. You know, Ryan Gosling is riding high after Barbie. Uh, I don't think many people know this IP other than Jeff, uh, <laughs> but, uh, Great TV show. Great nobody TV majors. Show. Amazing. Yeah. Won't matter. But, um, it, but I do think there's, you know, some people that might turn out for, for like the romance part of it. And it has potential that it could do a hundred, which could put it on the list. Just a hundred. I, I gotta really? say, this is a bold choice for Peter this to not wild. have on the top ten. So, yes. like, either Facts. Peter's gonna look like a genius for leaving it out, or you know, he, you know, and we'll all look like idiots, or vice versa. I think, mm-hmm. right? So, I would. You know what? If I was gonna make a list in my head, it would be in my top ten. But like everything else I listed, seemed like it could make over a hundred million, and I yeah. feel like this is gonna make slightly less. And I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, my second dark choice is Alien Romulus, which. The thing that's hurting this is it comes out on August 16th. Yeah. Correct. It looks incredible, but only has three weeks at the uh, box mm-hmm. office. And um, I've heard it's great. Uh, the hype is huge. Uh, the, the highest grossing alien movie so far made $126 million. That was Prometheus. Um, so, I mean, it has potential it could do that, right? But could it do that in three weeks? I don't know. I think it'll probably do like more like 80 but who knows? Could do higher. Um, and my third one is Horizon and America Saga, which uh, chapter one, which I think um, I'm so clueless on. I don't know. 
I don't like Westerns. I don't know. I know they're making a comeback on TV and I know, but do those people go to the theaters? Do right. those people want to see anything? Did they spend a 50 million per movie or is it a hundred million per movie on this? Do you know? I think hundred per movie. <laughs> that is insane yeah. to me. That makes me think that they believe that this is going to do a hundred million mm-hmm. in theaters, which scares me because that would put it, that should mean it should be on the list. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, yeah. Now I read it back. I do think it's probably 50 it's, million it, per movie. It's a yeah. hundred for both. It's a yes, hundred for both. Yes. But, okay. but I think it's mostly Kevin Costner's money is my sense, right? So. Yeah. Be nice. Be be nice to be able to drop a hundred million dollars on your movie at some point. You know, that's yeah. uh, definitely. Spend them, you don't spend that much on your TikToks, Dave. I thought for sure that we got like. <laughs> wow! How dare you, Jermaine? I mean, you it, you, you could have just stopped with like it could be nice to have money. Like that would be great. <laughs> That'd be great. All right, Horizon, American Saga, uh, Alien, Romulus, and the Fall Guy. Peter Serretta's Dark Horse choices. Dravindra Hardwar, your three Dark Horses. Going to bring up a movie we have not even mentioned yet. Mm. Maxine. Wow. I think Triple this X movie has Maxine. the potential. It's coming out July 5th. That is a big holiday weekend. I think the trailer kicks ass. I think like there's a lot of good word of mouth around the previous movies from this. So yeah, I think Maxine has a lot of potential. I'm also going to put Garfield here and uh, and Fly Me to the Moon because we, we got Channing Tatum in rom-com again. That's cute. Let's go for it. I, I'm going to say that Maxine was at one point on my list, but... Yes, X and Pearl were great horror movies. Neither of them made more than $15 million yep. at the box office domestically. That said, Maxine, in my opinion, has one of the best trailers for any movie. This Fantastic. Time. It's, totally. an, it's an amazing yeah. trailer. Like, yeah, do you think so it has the potential to get people that don't even know it's a third film? It doesn't Absolutely. matter. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. I, so. yeah. Yeah. I feel like they might have the true crime angle. Uh, yeah. That'll yeah. bring out some folks. But but I, I, I'm so excited for it. I love the other one. Yeah. Ty, but like... They made eleven million and nine million. Do we think yeah. this is going to make fifty million? Maybe? Yeah, I don't. I don't if think it, it has to make a chance. top ten. It's got to make like seventy five million. So it's going to do seven x the last two movies. <laughs> it would have to really break yeah. out. Like yeah. it's, it's not out of the question, but it would have to really break I'm gonna, out. From I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with out of the question. But that's just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'll be in the top ten of my heart. Maybe yes. not the box agreed. office. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed with that. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, that's Devendra's top three choices. Um, Dark horse uh, choices. D- d- dark horse choices. Actually, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No bike riders. I thought bike riders. Yeah, was where was that? that? You teased so I mean, hard. I, the bike I had riders. a lot of love for it. I had a lot of love for it. But then uh, somebody reminded me that uh, a Kevin Costner movie was here, and my entire list <laughs> was like. <laughs> so, but you, so you yeah. went, you went Maxine over bike riders, which has uh, two major stars in it. It does. It does. I mean, hey, listen, nobody else is mentioning bike riders either, but I, yeah. I'm i personally very excited for at bike riders. At least Devinjo mentioned it at all. Jermaine. You mentioned okay. it. Yeah. It doesn't count yeah. on the list. Okay, just double yeah. checking. Yep, yep. All right, so Maxine, Horizon, what was your third choice, Devinjo? Uh, Garfield. Garfield, Garfield. Those are Devinjo's. No, Maxine, Garfield, and Fly Me to the Moon. Dark oh, horses. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry. Okay, so th- those are Devinjo's dark horse choices. Jeff Kanata, your dark horse choices. All movies that have been said before, I went with Garfield and If. Uh, really struggled not putting either of those actually in the main top 10. I, yeah. I think they both have a, the people that have put those in your lists. I, I feel like not, not bad ideas. Uh, yeah. Garfield is a real question mark. Garfield could make like 15 bucks yes. or it could make $150 million. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have yeah. no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then my third Agreed. one is alien Romulus um, for everything that everybody's already said, where it just comes out so late yeah. that it doesn't really have, the 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 chance to get there but it could by some weird you know just be a massive uh, first three weeks but yeah so those are my three i'm gonna put this out there garfield is over guys society has passed garfield by and i don't think that movie is gonna be anywhere near the top 10 i thought you were gonna say there. garfield was canceled i'm like what happened no. <laughs> <laughs> you should people, see what he did to Odie. people but, um, love mondays now <laughs> Yeah. Okay. People, People love, love Mondays. Mondays. Hate lasagna. <laughs> Hate lasagna. Uh, the the we'll reason see, we'll that see. I think the yeah. the entire reason that Garfield might work, aside from what Peter said about Sony animation, just like are automatic, is that it's the first kids movie of the year of the summer. Right. It's the first one. It, it beats yeah. uh, Inside Out and Despicable Me to the punch, and that might just be desperation enough for parents to be like oh there's something out let's do it 
All right. My three Dark Horses, Horizon and America Saga, Chapter 1. This could definitely make uh, the top 10. I'm surprised, honestly, some of us haven't put two, two the both movies on the top. That would be a really... I Now I'm regretting not doing that, just to, just to have a list that's extremely different from everyone else. But yeah, same thing as Jeff, where, where like... This this could either be a massive success or it could be a huge financial debacle. Um, we, we haven't even talked about if the movie's going to be any good, right? Like, I, I don't know. I, I just think a huge question mark around that one. Alien Romulus, for reasons you guys have said. And I'm also putting Trap on my yeah! Dark Horses as well. Shyamalan is one of the few directors that can bring the juice. Glass, 2019 movie. Obviously, it was a sequel to other movies, but that movie made $111 million domestic. Obviously, Knock at the Cabin didn't do quite as well as that movie. Not nearly as well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I'm going to bet on the heart renaissance, gentlemen yeah. and lady. Uh, <laughs> I think that uh, people are coming back uh, and they're going to... Ooh, Josh Hartnett? The person ooh. who I loved in the Michael Bay film Pearl Harbor? He's back in theaters? <laughs> from from the faculty? Yes, Josh from Hartnett. the faculty. <laughs> With a that much is better a must, haircut? Yes, that is uh, a must-see. A supporting actor in the uh, 2023 hit Oppenheimer is back in theater? I, I, I must go see this in theaters. That is trap. It's also a double oh. Shyamalan summer for yeah. us, by the way. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. mentioned The Watchers so at fun. all. Yeah. yeah. But he, here's the problem with M. Night is his movies either do like 50 million or 250 million. And the last two have done like Knock of the Cabin did 35, Old did 48. And this only has four weeks. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. The yeah. premise is. Yeah. That's why it wasn't on my list. You're probably yeah. right. You're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was the next I, one I, on I, my I, list. By the way, I'm, I'm just curious. Jeff, do you know what this movie is about? I do not, and I don't want to. Don't, okay. yeah, don't say anything. Don't say okay, anything okay. Yeah. I, I, I will say uh, Maxine was almost in the Dark Horses, even though, uh, for reasons we've discussed, like it's probably not going to do that well. And also Fly Me to the Moon, I think, does have the potential to be a huge breakout, uh, but also barely missed my Dark Horses. So, yeah, The only one though, that we didn't mention at all that was almost my Dark Horses was Borderlands, just because... Oh, yeah. None of us have Borderlands, Borderlands Nobody, Borderlands put, Nobody has all. any confidence yeah. in that movie mm-hmm. at that all. Movie no, we shouldn't have any confidence, but it's, you know, video game movies and yeah. things are doing kind of well. It's a well-known title. It could title. do well. It could do real well. But it's also it, had, like, notoriously bad production that absolutely. people are very aware of. Right. Yeah. 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 I think that uh, any time you can say we can watch or we have a blank at home, uh, the movie's not going to do that. We have a Borderlands at home, uh, <laughs> and it's called Fallout on Prime Video. You know, uh, we, it's true. we have a Kevin Horizon. Hart. And a, we have a Horizon American Saga at home. It's called Yellowstone. You well, know, like the, yeah. The retort to that is, hey, did you love this? There's more of it available over here, right? You know, like right. Uh, it shows desire, shows excitement. I don't know. I don't know if yeah, it's Borderlands. I've been satiated by Fallout, or I'm all out of Fallout, and I want more of it. Absolutely, that's a completely accurate possibility, Jeff. Can that that might happen? I don't know. I kind of remember, like, I'll tell you something that's swaying me a little bit is uh, how badly the Flash did. Now, obviously, a lot of people don't like that movie, mm-hmm. but our, Jeff Kanata and I, we loved. I remember leaving that yeah. movie thinking that is going to be extremely well. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, hey, guys, guys. There's already a we already have the Flash at home. It's called The Flash. <laughs> and it aired for nine seasons on CW or however many seasons. You know, like yeah. there's hundreds of episodes on the CW, right? Like you don't need to go to the theater. So that's kind of like Do you know what I have my list. Yeah. Ad nauseum at home. Batmans and Jokers. <laughs> Doesn't stop <laughs> them from being yeah. huge hits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Sure. That, the exception that proves the rule. Jeff can uh, the exception of Bruiser. Okay, I do be- love that we all shut out Back to Black. That makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Back to you know Back to Black was also uh, mm-hmm. at one point on my list. The, guys, the Bob Marley one one love movie that did enough money to make our top ten if it mm-hmm. would, came out this summer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. so I guess we're just saying no one's gonna go watch that movie Back to Black, right? Yeah, no, I no. don't. I don't think so. Too like. It is a very, very American thing. And since we're looking at domestics, um, Americans do not like Sam Taylor Johnson. Um, so I think that hurt it. And the fact that uh, the the reviews out of the UK have, you know, shown that there is a definitely an angle to uh, to it that I think made a lot of Americans also really mad. So I don't think they're going to show up. 
any other movies from box office or summer of 2024 that people want to mention that like might have done well or that you almost made it on your list that we haven't talked about? I have a couple on my list, but I don't think they would ever have made it. Harold and the Purple Crayon. That comes oh, out yeah. at the beginning of August. It's yeah. based on that book. Looks uh, terrible. Z- yeah, Zachary yeah. Levi uh, hasn't proven to be a box office draw. And um, I don't know. It could be the biggest bomb of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Uh, but you guys uh, briefly mentioned The Watchers, which mm-hmm. is uh, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter's... Uh, what's her name? Uh, Shauna? I yeah, Shauna, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually based on a book, I think. So there's some IP there. Like, is there any potential of that doing well? The IP is the Shyamalan name, which is yeah. just funny seeing how it's like presented in the trailer. Yeah. I hope about- that it does well. I really mm-hmm. like the episodes of Servant that she directed. I think she's a yeah. very, very good director. Um, also, I just love Mike and Monroe, so I think that would be something cool to check out. One that I like, I don't think it's gonna. It would be nowhere near the top ten. But part of me hopes that In a Violent Nature has a little bit of like that terrifier horror boom Mm. of something Mm -hmm. that like really makes the hardcore horror people just really show up for the theaters to see that movie. But it is going to be on Shutter of like shortly after its theatrical run. People may wait for it. But I don't know. I feel like there's always one sleeper horror movie that people weirdly get really into. And I think that one has potential. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I'm curious. It, it comes out way too late to have any bearing on our list, but I'm curious what you guys think of uh, how well The Crow will do. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since the last Crow movie, right? But yeah. I think it's it has... late, late August, right? Is a new Crow movie. Yeah. So I think it's one of those movies that if it, the, if they get if it's really good if it gets if, if the critics love it I think people will turn out out of curiosity because it's not something that like a lot of people like are super into the crow I mean there are people like that but I think it's one of those things that we all tangentially have in our head like oh the crow I'd see that oh it's good mm-hmm. okay maybe I'll go see it so I think it's really going to uh and then Rupert Sanders directed that he's kind of hit or miss um first first apes guy right no yeah. no different uh, one. that's different Rupert one? Wyatt yes, yeah yeah Rupert yeah, Sanders yeah. is the ghost of the shell guy so, oh yeah. God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you made no. something that was good. I don't remember what that. <laughs> a <about>. pox <laughs> upon him. No, no success for him. Uh, I'm with you on that. Yeah, yeah, a movie that I don't think we, I don't really see anybody talking about is Babes, which is coming out soon. That's the Pamela Adlon directed movie starring mm. Alana Glazer and Michelle Buteau. Like, I think that has potential to like do really well over the summer too. Yeah. We we should mention even because there's a lot of chapter ones, day mm-hmm. ones. Uh, Strangers chapter one comes out in May. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. that movie is, you know, Curse. it's not going to hit a hundred million. Yeah, yeah, that's what like tarot is another one, right? Is that come out this summer? Yeah, yeah tarot comes out, out soon. Well. Couple, uh, there's a couple of movies we haven't mentioned that I'm really excited about uh, that we haven't talked about, but that really probably aren't going to make the top ten. Uh, there is. Uh, you know, I saw the TV glows coming out in the next couple of weeks. That's going to be. Yeah. I've heard that's really interesting. Um, it's the, great. Uh, it's mm-hmm. not going to make money, but it's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The new Yorgos Lanthimos, Kinds of Kindness with uh, Emma or Emily Stone is coming out uh, in June that I'm really excited about. And uh, what? there's one other one that I wanted to mention, give a shout out for. There was uh, Long Legs. Uh, yeah, Long Legs. Long right? Legs. Yeah, Long Legs does look awesome. It's like, awesome. what is that? That's going to be interesting, right? <laughs> Nick but like, Cage movie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, is Nick Cage in Long Legs? Is that what you're saying? I believe so. Yes. He's not been. Yeah. Hasn't been in any of the marketing materials. But oh yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say I've I've been getting the I've been getting emails from Neon about Long Legs, but no, no Nick Cage in the emails. But yeah, yeah. Um, the other so that, thing I hope people end up seeing, by the way, is Robot Dreams, also yeah. from Neon, and I really, really dug that. I've seen that. Oh, yeah, it's that's fantastic. Great. It's so good. All right. Anything else about summer 2024? Those are our lists. <laughs> I hope we survive it. Everybody, I hope we survive. Hope see it. You all at the end we'll of be summer. back in the fall to talk about the results of the summer movie wager. Uh, but really appreciate our guests today for joining the film cast to share their list with us. Thank you so much to Jermaine Lucier, to BJ Colangelo, uh, and to Peter Serena. And again, welcome to BJ Colangelo. This is our first year uh, doing the list with us. And uh, BJ, you crushed it. You crushed it. Oh, thank you. So, thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, also, Jermaine is uh, letting me know I should mention where people can follow progress of the Summer Movie Wager all summer. Uh, of course, you can go to the summermoviewager.com, the awesome website that Dennis set up. But in addition to that, uh, the Summer Movie Wager, uh, you know, Dennis used to troll me ruthlessly 
on on Tw- uh, X, the site formerly known as Twitter, he is now on Threads at threads.net slash at some movie W. You can follow him on Threads as well, and he's always going to be sharing updates about who's doing what and how well people are doing. And it's actually one of the it's fun, so fun parts of uh, the summer is following along to see who's pulling ahead, who's pulling, who's doing, falling behind. No, we'll never uh, see those. How well our choices yeah. are doing. Uh, and no so no sure, one will ever see them on threads. On threads. Be sure yeah. to follow. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Him on threads at threads.net slash at some movie. W will leave the link in the show notes as well. But uh, if you don't want to go to threads, the summer movie, movie wager dot com is where you can follow a lot. All right. I think that is it, right? Thanks to everyone for listening, to participate for participating. Thanks again to Dennis for setting up the website and for tracking our progress. And again, thanks to uh, Jermaine, BJ, and Peter for joining us today. Thank you so much for watching this video of the Filmcast. Check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future. You can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes. And support this podcast at patreon.com slash film podcast, where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive after darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible.